Welcome to another American River College Athletics broadcast brought to you by Stones Radio Networks. Coming to you live from beautiful campus of American River College in Sacramento, California. Today's game is sponsored by United Rentals, Ace Body and Towing, the Lincoln Potters Baseball Club, Grateful Bread, Super Taco, and Taylor Builders. To get you ready for today's matchup, let's send it up to the booth to the legend, Mark the Phantom Low, to bring you all of today's action. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to American River College. We're at Beaver Field on the campus of American River College in lovely Sacramento, California. We've got, let's call it early morning, let's call it just morning, Big 8 Conference Baseball for you in a game that's moved from uh, tomorrow as they are anticipating rain uh, during the afternoon hours. They moved it to today at 11 a.m., and we are almost at 11 a.m., and the Beavers are taking the field. They are hosting Consumers River College Hawks. The teams played yesterday in a barn burner. 16-11 to 11 was the score for the Hawks uh, yesterday. Tyler Moore on the mound for the Beavers. Chris Toy is on assignment, so my partner today, my uh, director, producer, and sidekick is Mr. Stones McCoy. And Stones, I want to get started right away. I want to get started talking to you. Yeah. Yesterday, we've got two teams who have won a combined five games in the B- Big 8 Conference, which uh, is not as bad as it sounds because it's a very <laughs> tough conference. They played yesterday 16-11. They come out here early today. What are you looking for? Well, we're looking for a, a continuation of offense. You know, uh, yesterday the Beavers were able to get quite a few hits. Now, Granted, they were playing uh, in uh, consumers, and that that park is conducive. A little smaller, to, yeah. To, to get yeah. a few hits, and there was a few home runs yesterday. So I'd like to see the continuation of bat to ball, uh, putting the ball in play, put the pressure on the, the Hawks today. And, uh, again, I, I'm really curious to see what we're going to get out of Moore today on the mound. Yeah, Tyler Moore 0-4 on the season. 30 innings pitch, 29 strikeouts, only 14 base on balls. Not a bad comparison there, a 6.30 ERA. And, as I said, he is 0-4. So let's take a look at the batting order he is going to be facing today for the Consumers River Hawks Chase Christensen leading it off. You'll see Griffin Harrison there. Griffin was three for six with five runs bat in and a home run in yesterday's win for the Hawks. Noah Cantor in the DH spot. Cameron Orr had a home run yesterday. He's batting in the sixth spot and then Robert Perry hitting in the eighth spot. The catcher hitting 318 on the season. Michael Freitas the right-hander on the mound for the Hawks in this one as Tyler Moore is getting done with his warm-up tosses. Beavers uh, 8 and 20 on the season, 2 and 11 in Big 8 Conference. The Hawks at 13 and 18 and 3 and 13 in conference play. And so they're coming out here hot on the heels of yesterday's win. Uh, Beavers have lost four straight in conference play. We're just going to see uh, Chase Christensen, then Corey Williams, Griffin Harrison, the first three hitters for the Hawks. Chase Coming to bat, he is a freshman out of Rio Americano High School, batting 310 on the season, right-hander, and we are ready to go. No, we're not. The umpire says, nope, I'm sorry. He has not logged on to the right spot on YouTube yet. It's American River College Athletics or Stones Radio Network Zump. That's where you got to go, so just know. First pitch is swung out and missed, and we are underway here. 11.02 by my, I was going to say by my, Watch, of course. It's not by it's my, my phone. Oh, it's Stone has a watch. Yeah, it's a San Francisco Giants watch. Isn't that cute? Oh, one pitch, breaking balls high. One and one. How are you Giants doing already? Uh, the, you know, they're not great. Uh, I took two out of uh, the series with San Diego, and they haven't won versus the Dodgers yet. Okay, thank you for that. I'm glad we highlighted the positive. That's in the dirt. I got the two out of San Diego who are just so – so they only play teams that come back from Korea then. Is the that Cor- what they're – they play the, the Korean Classic, and they are uh, – they uh, a couple, took a couple in the chin from the Dodgers. Well, and as soon as they finish this series with the Dodgers, they go home and they play San Diego. Okay, so we're going to stay with <laughs> the, the Korean trip. Okay, very good. Thank you, Stones. Do one pitch. Chop foul, two and two. Christensen, I just said, three home runs, 22 batted in. Had two runs scored yesterday and two for five for Chase. Just a freshman out of Rio Americano. He's followed by Corey Williams and then Griffin Harrison in the top of the first. 18 hits, 16 runs for the uh, Hawks yesterday. That is a fastball. It misses, so it'll push it full at three balls and two strikes. They got home runs from Cameron Orr. They also got one from Griffin Harrison. Beavers got a home run from uh, D.H. Jose Vega, who has just really been hitting well from that spot. 3-2 pitch, swung on a missed off-speed pitch, and a strikeout recorded by Tyler Moore, his 30th on the season. Christensen's down for the first out of the inning. Bring up Corey Williams, the third baseman. 
Corey at 314 on the season. He has a home run. He has 23 runs batted in, wearing number 22, Elk Grove High School sophomore Corey Williams. He lines one out to center field, moving over to his left is Marcus Babata, and that is the second out quickly, and it gives us a chance to take a look at the defensive alignment for your Beavers today. We saw Babata in center, Winalski over in right, David Henry out in left field today, Brett Griffiths at third, Darren Eels at short, Jaden Reynolds at second, Willie Tatum at first. That's basically been the infield, and of course Duncan Hansen, the two-year starter behind the plate, and Tyler Moore on the mound, and now here's Griffin Harrison, who is on a hot streak. Griffin at 3-11 on the season. Hits that sharp lane of the hole into left field for a base hit. Saying Griffin was 3-for-6 yesterday. Hitting 3-11. Has five home runs. Has 30 driven in. Drove in five of those yesterday. 3-for-6 with five RBIs, including a home run. And he lines a base hit to left field. Picked up by Henry. Returned into the infield. Bringing up Noah Cantor, the designated hitter. Noah's also out of Elk Grove High School. He is a freshman. 260, but he does have three home runs on the season. There goes the runner the outside, throw down to second by Hanson. It's going to be to left of the second baseman out into center field, but Babata comes in quickly, and Harrison has to stay put. He has the stolen base. He's in scoring position now. The pitch called a ball on Noah Cantor. Two for six for Noah yesterday in the 16 to 11 Hawks win. Grabbed in shorts is on deck. Inside, just missed in there. 2-0 and now. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs. Harrison down at second base. It's hit high up in the air. Right center field moving over Wanalski. Wyatt tracking it down. Reaches up and makes the catch in right center field. Covers a lot of ground out in right field. No runs to hit. They left one at the end of a half inning. Hawks nothing. Beavers coming to bat. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here. Large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a super taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Welcome back to Beaver Field, bottom of the first inning. Beavers hold the Hawks scoreless in the top of the first. Michael Freitas, the left-hander out of Franklin High School down in Oak Grove, will be on the mound for the Hawks. He is 1-4 on the season, a 5.04 ERA. Let's take a look, if we can, at the Beavers batting lineup here as we'll start it off with Brett Griffiths. And you'll see Brett Griffiths, Jose Vega, and Jaden Reynolds. Three of the first four hitters hitting over 340 on the season. Vega, as we said, with a home run yesterday. Uh, Duncan Hansen, a pair of hits. He's batting in the sixth spot. And Willie Tatum hitting eighth. Marcus Babata rounds it out in the ninth spot in center field. And Brett Griffiths will start us off. Brett at 342 on the season. A one ball, one strike count. Line drive over the second baseman said That's into right center field for a solid base hit. Cut off by Christensen in center field and returned in. But Brett Griffiths, as we just started talking about how he's been hitting better lately, pounds another base hit. He's at first base. Wanowski coming up. Let's take a look defensively at your uh, Consumers River Hawks. We got 
Rhea Miao in uh, left field, Chase Christensen in center or in right. It's per Pernetti, Shorts, Harrison, and Williams on the infield. Behind the plate is Robert Perry and Michael Freitas, the left-hander, on the mound. Here's Winalski. One ball and no strikes on Wyatt. 250 on the season for Wyatt, left-handed hitter. That's in there for a call strike, 0-2. Let's make it 1-1. 0-2, one 1-1, one. Oh one one. take your choice. It's like a buffet. Okay, 1-1 one one it is. Freitas checking the runner at first base for a while. Breaking ball misses outside. So that makes it 2-1. and one. Yeah, okay. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back on the horse here. Wyatt was 1-5 for five yesterday, scored a run in the Beavers' loss. And it consumed us. That is on the inside corner, call strike two. Jose Vega to follow, then Jade Reynolds for the Beavers. Both teams with a hit as Griffiths lines that single to right center field to lead off the bottom of the first. Winalski fouls that one away. He'll stay alive. Brett getting off of first base. Pretty good lead over there. Hit sharply down the third baseline. That's a fair ball into left field. Griffiths round second. He's going to go for third. Wanalski pulls into second base. He's got himself a double, and the Beavers are in business. Second and third with nobody out here in the bottom of the first. Wanalski hit it to the right of Corey Williams at third base. Mio had to run it down by the line. He got it in as quickly as possible, but Wanalski easily in at second base. Second and third now for the Beavers, and here comes Jose Vega, who since assuming the DH role a couple of weeks ago, hitting at a 343 clip, one home run, which he got yesterday, and eight runs batted in. He was three for six on the day yesterday. Jose takes inside for a ball. Gene Reynolds to follow. Good piece of hitting by Wyatt Winalski. The left-hand hitter steers it down the third base line, and he's out at second base. Vega hits it sharply up the middle. That is going to get into center field. A base hit, one run scores. Here comes the second. Winalski will score easily. Jose Vega does it again, and the Beavers are on the board in the bottom of the first. They lead this thing two to nothing. Griffith scoring. Winalski scores easily. Jose now with 10 runs batted in on the season. And there's going to be a meeting at the mound already for the uh, Hawks as the manager comes out to take a talk. And while they're doing that, Stones will take a what I call take a talk, which I just invented. Uh, this is kind of what you said. <laughs> yeah. you said. I want to see this. And then we come out and we see the uh, Griffiths, who's been fantastic all season, gets us started when Olski comes through and then Jose Vega. Absolutely. Good at bats, putting the ball in play, putting the pressure on the defense. You know, that that one right there by Vega back up the middle. Second base had a shot at oh, it. He did. You know, it, was wasn't, it wasn't a screamer back up the middle. But again, you're putting the pressure and making them make plays. And now, so far, I mean, you put two runs up on the board in the first. You can't ask for a better start. Yeah, you can't ask for a better start. And as we saw yesterday, you're going to need every one of those runs. As uh, the, the uh, Hawks came up with 16 runs on 18, 18 hits yesterday. So here's Jaden Reynolds, also impressive. 348, he bunts at that one. Had Williams back a little bit at third, but Jaden couldn't put it back in the field of play. So the freshman from Bella Vista, 11 runs batted in. In the clean spot, 0 for 4 yesterday for Jaden, but he still has an average at 348. Bradis comes to the plate. It's hit sharply out to second base to second for one over to first. They're not going to get Jaden Reynolds. It's a fielder's choice. And with shorts over to Harrison, and Vega is retired. Reynolds takes his place at first base, probably a speedier base runner if you're looking at the silver lining. And here comes Darren Eels. Shortstop is hitting at uh, 219, four home runs, and 18 runs batted in out of uh, Bear Creek High School down in Stockton. Hitting in the number five spot, Duncan Hanson to follow. Darren hits it sharply down the line. I think that hit a fair ball. Reynolds coming all the way around. It's a double for Darren Eels. I couldn't tell if he hit off the glove of Corey Williams at third or just got down the line. But sharply hit ball by Eels. Third hit for the Beavers in the inning. And they are in business again with Duncan Hansen, who was two for four and scored three runs in yesterday's game. So Duncan coming in here at 240 has 18 runs batted in. 
and is in a spot here where he can give the Beavers a considerable advantage early on in this game. The perfect pitch on the outside corner. Perry set up outside, and Freight has hit him perfectly 0-1 on Duncan Hansen. Runners at second and third, one out here. Same idea, but that one a little bit too far outside. Pitching him outside in the second baseman. Shorts is very close to second base. There's a big hole at traditional second base position for Hanson if they pitch him outside. Duncan almost looked like he was trying to steer it that way, but it's foul. So it's one and two on Duncan Hanson. David Henry batting in the seventh spot. He is on deck. Outside again, two and two. There must be must be the book on Duncan Hansen. Don't come inside because they have set up for all four pitches on the outside corner. Eels at second, Reynolds at third. Two runs in, one out. Reaches out and spoils that one down the right field line. Out of play. Nice little crowd out here that had to get up very early. We did see our first uh, sighting of, uh, we got a couple of canine sightings. But they have uh, moved uh, moved away from where they were, so I'm um, to locate them. Here's Hanson. Pitch to Hanson. Fouls that one off again. I thought one of them was your friend Sammy. Ooh, a new dog. New dog sighting. Hanson takes in the dirt. That's a nice block by Perry. We have a service dog who comes out all the time, and then a new new dog sightings are, you know, that's what you put on your Insta. Okay, well, we'll go down and interview. I'll send you down there with the mic. We'll do a little interview. Yeah, with the dog, because that worked out so well for us last time. Hanson lines that one into left field. That's a clean base hit. That'll score, too, and Duncan might get himself to second. He rounds first, picked up in left field by Mio, but that is sliding into second with a two-run double is Duncan Hanson. The Beavers have exploded for four here in the bottom of the first, and they lead it four to nothing. Hanson picking up RBI 19 and 20, and he did it very impressively as uh, Freitas finally came in a little bit closer to the plate, and uh, Hanson turned on it. That's probably why they were keeping it away from him, and he lines that one to left center field. So that'll bring up David Henry. David at 275 on the season. Right-handing left fielder. Swings at a breaking ball inside, uh, fouls it back. So a couple of big hits, two-run single by Vega, two-run double by Duncan Hansen, and the Beavers are on the board in a big way, four to nothing, with Hansen still at at second base. Henry lines that one foul outside of first over. Eh, some people just walking in the uh, nice wooded area over there on the walking path, and now all of a sudden here's a ball flying at him. One and two now on David. Fouls that one off almost in the same area, and that was a little bit closer to people, so heads up over there. Everybody's fine. So Henry, the seventh batter in the inning. Beavers with five hits already, including a couple of doubles, one by Winalski, one by Hansen. Henry fouls that one off in the same general area right to the guy who was chasing the other two. So that worked out pretty well. I like the good job, David. Swing and a miss at a high fastball. Protecting a little bit too much. That one chasing that for the second out of the inning and bring up Willie Tatum. The sophomore first baseman out of Grant High. Looks like Jay Spill and the Weva warming up in the pen out of Laguna Creek High School. He's in there for the Hawks down the right field line. Tatum with a 153 average does have nine runs batted in on the season. He's got Hanson out at second base. Breaking ball fouled off by Willie. Marcus Babata, the nine hitter on deck. Beavers trying to bat through the lineup here in the bottom of the first. Against the left-hander, Michael Freitas. Hanson leading out at second base. Willie takes outside. Nice block by Robert Perry. He's done it a couple of times here in this inning.
One and one to Willie Tatum. Breaking ball misses a little bit inside. Good looking pitch by Michael Freitas. Two balls, one strike. Tatum winds that one to right field. Is that going to get down? It does. Here comes Hanson around third. The ball picked up by Oren Wright. The throw to the plate is not going to be in time. It's an RBI single for Willie Tatum. The Beavers have put a five spot up on the board in the bottom of the first inning. Willie with his 10th run batting in the season. And Duncan Hanson motoring and moving and chugging around third base. Almost could hear Creedence Clearwater in the background as the soundtrack could keep on chugging. And Duncan scores on a slide. And the Beavers... Five runs on five hits. Make that six hits here in the first inning. And I'll bring up Marcus Babata. Breaking ball's popped up. See if that gets out of play, giving Chase's Perry the catcher, and it will get out of play. 0 oh 1. On Marcus Babata. Tatum leads it first. Next pitch is down low. Perry with the block. Robert Perry out of Del Campo High School. Freshman behind the plate. That's in the dirt again. Tatum thought about going. Now he's got to scamper back to first, which he does. Two balls, one strike, going to the umpire, and he's paid to keep track of those kinds of things. Fastball on the outside corner. He was an up two and two on Babata. Seven runs batted in for Marcus. 0 for 3 with a run batted in in yesterday's game. Look out, that hits him. Breaking ball hits him, and he'll go to first base. And the Beavers have batted around here in the first inning. And it looks like we're going to get a pitching change from Simmons, so we're going to take a break. Beavers have put up five. We are in the bottom of the fifth, still going. Beavers lead it five to nothing. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best-kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. Loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small-town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed the job. We used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality and, and people notice it, they can see it. Got dragged there and I didn't, what, he's an actor? Oh crap, who cares? Uh, you got the rest of your life to be, you know, serious. But so Just tweet it out and then don't really then respond. Run away. Yeah. No, I think it happens to some of us. Maybe it sounds a little personal to you, but... Um, I, I'm not... I didn't want me yeah, to sound Yeah, I don't know. It just way. maybe I, I, sounds yeah. like that. Generally, I know again, you're a very bright guy. Yeah. You see right right into right my soul, you. my friend. But that's why I have so many jobs, because people think I'm funny <laughs> when they're driving home. <laughs> Let- Bottom of the first, Beavers have put five runs up on the board. Chase, Jace Villanueva is the new pitcher, the left-hander out of Laguna Creek, making his sixth appearance on the season, just three and a third innings, four strikeouts and 11 walks, and he is uh, no wins and no losses. And Stones, let me bring you back in here. Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. We talked about, you talked about earlier, we're looking for a lot of hitting as this game gets started. The Beavers have put up maybe their most impressive inning of the uh, year, and yet I'm sitting here going, keep it up. Come on, come on, come on. I don't. We have come not on, seen on, them on. bat around here in, uh, in, in at ARC since we've been here. That was an amazing inning. But you do. You got to keep. We're it going. still going. Yeah, we're gotta still 
still Keep going. It going. And it goes with Brett Griffiths, who uh, has singled and scored already in this inning, came into the game at 342, the sophomore out of Jesuit High School. Scored his 25th run of the season in this one already, and he's the first batter for Villanueva. It's a sharp grinder into the hole into left field for a base hit. Here comes Tatum around third. The ball picked up and left. The throw's coming into third, and Brett Griffiths has two hits in the inning, and the Beavers have their sixth run. Holding at second is Marcus Babata. Brett now has his 16th run battered in and his 25th run scored in this first inning. And Wyatt Winalski, who sliced a double down the left field line about uh, 15 minutes ago, comes up to the plate. So he is one for one today. Came in at 250. Had a hit yesterday. Breaking ball just misses inside from Villanueva. So it is one ball and no strikes. That's chopped down and fouled. Six hits for the Beavers and six runs. Winalski, one ball, one strike. Sophomore out of San Juan High School. Left-handed hitting right fielder. Covers a lot of ground out in right field. Breaking ball, good-looking pitch in there for a strike. Good-looking enough that even Stones McCoy made the strike gesture with the right hand, rang him up. And he usually disagrees with the umpires kind of as a rule, like a philosophy. He lives by it. Manolski takes call, strike three down the middle, and that's the end of the inning. Six runs on six hits. We go to the top of the second. Beavers on top, 6-0. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family-oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24-hour towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859, or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco, we'd love to see you. Pass plung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86, the off speeder. Bruno strikes out the. He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Top of the second after the best half inning in Beavers history. Over the course of Stones Radio Networks being on hand, they scored six times in the bottom of the first. And Tyler Moore, the beneficiary of all that, he'll face Grafton Shorts, then Cameron Orr and Ben Pernetti, the first three hitters for the Hawks here in the top of the second inning. Shorts hitting at 288 on the campaign, one home run and 24 runs batted in. He is a sophomore from Davis High School. Watches that one outside a little bit high. 2-0 on Grafton Shorts, which is kind of the most Davis-sounding name I've heard in a while. Down in the dirt, 3-0. So one thing Stones McCoy talks about more than anything else is the shutdown inning. So the Beavers want to come out after scoring six and shut down the Hawks. 3-0 count immediately on Grafton Shorts. Cameron Orr on deck, and Cameron had a home run in yesterday's game. Inside with a fastball, and Shorts walks on four pitches. He is down at first base, and here is Cameron Orr. Hitting at 235, four home runs, though, and 21 batted in. And then Cameron has two, two for three with three runs batted in, including a home run yesterday. Cameron out of Ponderosa High School, a sophomore. 
batting in the number six spot for the Hawks in this one. That one sails high, so five straight balls starting the top of the second inning. From Tyler Moore, Ben Pernitti to follow. Robert Perry in the eighth spot. Noah Rea Mio is batting in the ninth spot, the left fielder for Consumers River. Fastball misses high. That one catches the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. Shorts leading our first medium lead, but Moore's going to throw over there just to try to keep Grafton close. 2 1 on Cameron Orr. Fans trickling in here. That one is in there for a call strike. A lot of these fans look like the guys from Stones that have, on principle, don't get up before noon. You know, it just looks like that kind of a crew to me. You know? Yeah, definitely my kind of crew. Well, last night was trivia night, as you know, and I'm, I, I kick it. I kick it on trivia night. High fly ball, left center field. Coming on, the left fielder, that is David Henry. And in left center field, he makes the catch for the first out. So good job by Tyler Moore to get come back and get Orr on the fly out. And brings up Ben Pernetti. Ben over at first base. Today, yesterday's game, one official at bat, three, or excuse me, no official at bats. One run scored and three base on balls. Ben out of Pleasant Grove High School down in Elk Grove. A freshman batting at 178. Does have a home run and has driven in eight runs. Takes one inside for a ball. 1-0 on Ben Pernetti. Shorts down at first base. He got the walk to open the inning. Then a fly out to David Henry by Cameron Orr. For the first out. Short lead at first by Shorts. There's a nice looking pass ball in there for a strike and a throw down to first base. Which we've seen both softball and baseball try up, you know, at least a dozen times this year. Hasn't ever really worked out well for either team. It, you do your best just to keep the ball from going down the right field line for the most part. Sure, it's a little bit bigger lead now, and Moore checks it out and throws over to Willie Tatum. One ball, one strike on Pernetti. Still early in this one, just the top of the second inning. There goes the runner. The pitch is swung on and fouled by Pernetti. Good jump over there, too, by Grafton Shores. Beavers put up the six runs, and obviously they played a team that yesterday put up 16 runs on 18 hits, and so not feeling too comfortable, but uh, a great start for AR back in the first inning with six runs on six hits, including three doubles in the inning. One ball, two strikes on the left-hand hitting Ben Pernetti. More coming to the plate, one and two. Fastball just misses, two and two. I always think that's dangerous when a pitcher doesn't agree with the call and he kind of turns his back and looks away from home plate. You never know if the catcher's just going to instinctively throw the ball back to you. Duncan Hansen, a veteran, though. There goes the runner again. He's swinging a miss. Hansen's going to throw down to second. It's too late. But Pernetti's out on strikes. Shorts gets the credit for a steal. Pernetti is the second strikeout for Tyler Moore. And bring up Robert Perry, the catcher. Freshman out of Del Campo, Robert hitting at 318 with seven runs batted in. 0 for 2 yesterday in the game, but he did drive in one of the Hawks 16. Right-hander against right-hander. The first pitch sails high with a fastball. One ball, no strikes. Checking out our service dog down in the... Uh, Front row. Service dogs get the best seats. I mean, you got to say that. So we're miss. Maybe we fouled that one into the catcher's glove. One and one. 
we're talking about the service dogs. Have you noticed the beautiful T-shirt? The Jack Russell T-shirt oh, my staring gosh. you in the face. Jack Russell Brewing Company, uh, Camino, California. That's a long way for me to go, but if they wanted to send me one of those shirts, that's outside. Yeah, that is pretty cool now that I see it. But uh, the dog's looking at me like, can you get me off this shirt? Can you give me a beer? <laughs> Do you even know that? It's the Jack Russell Brewing Company. He can get a beer wherever he wants to. That's, a, that's like a get a beer free card right there if you're wearing that. Give the dog a beer, man. Line drive right field. Winolski, though, right in the right spot. Wyatt reaches up and makes the catch. So a walk doesn't hurt the uh, Beavers. We go to the bottom of the second. They still lead this one six to nothing. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise, from minor carpentry to drywall, electrical and flooring for property managers, landlords, and renters alike. We ensure that every job is completed to the highest standards, so you can have peace of mind. Contact us today to discover how Jeffers Resource Group can help keep your home in top shape. Told Rick, I said, "This is the guy that's going to lead us out of the. <laughs> he can't even lead us out of the. He can't get lot. out of the parking lot." <laughs> so we just, just moments ago, the oh. a rhubarb, a brouhaha yes. between Mr. Reynolds, the great Jerry Reynolds, and the great Mr. Basketball. They I, always I, wear something different. different. Yeah. Bottom of the second inning from Beaver Field. Beavers with the six to nothing lead. Send to Jose Vega, Jane Reynolds, and Darren Eels, three, four, and five against Jay Spillanueva, who came on in relief of Michael Freitas to close out that first inning. Left-hander out of Laguna Creek High School delivers. Sharply hit but foul down the third baseline by Vega, who singled in two runs back in the first inning. He has 10 RBI on the season. Sophomore from, or excuse me, freshman from Highlands High. Pitcher D.H. Jose Vega. Breaking ball misses outside, Jose. One ball, one strike. Three for six in yesterday's game, and he went yard in that one. Takes that one outside. Two and one. Robert Perry sets up very much to the outside. Did that against Duncan Hansen in the first inning and staying behind the plate, though, for Vega, who sharply hits a ground ball into the hole in the left field. That's another base hit for the Beavers. Number eight and number two for Jose Vega. And here's Jaden Reynolds, who went into a fielder's choice his first time up. Jaden, 348, 11 runs batted in. 0 for 4, so still looking for his first hit in this series. Left-handed hitting second baseman. Coming in at third base is Corey Williams. Nice breaking ball in there for a strike. Reynolds showed Bunt his first time up, so Williams in on the infield grass. A couple of steps in, actually, as Vega leads at first base. Reynolds hits a sharp grounder. That's in the hole between first and second. Nice play by the second baseman. Throws to first and gets him by half a step. That was Grafton Short, who went to his left and got Reynolds at first on a really nice play. Vega does move to second base, and that'll bring up Darren Eels, who doubled his first time. One for five yesterday for Darren. Picked up an RBI. And he one for one so far today. Batting in the number five spot, the shortstop. Basically the shortstop for the entire season for Coach Jay. He chops that one foul back to the screen. We don't have a game program, so I don't have the names of the uh, consumers coaches. And I looked at their uh, website, and they have that page blank. So maybe they just decided we're just going to throw it up for grabs today or exactly what they're doing. 
I got stones on that ball gets away. It's a wild pitch going to third is Vega and he slides in. So the wild pitch allows Jose Vega to advance to third. Robert Perry doing a good job blocking it. Got away from him a little bit and Jose with a good secondary lead makes it to third. He's 90 feet away for Darren Eels who now has a one ball and one strike count. Infield is in for the Hawks. Eels sharply hits a ground ball but it's foul. So with one and two on Darren, obviously he's trying to get the ball in play. Dan Miko is your manager. Looks like, you know, Schuler, Scott Haynes, Harvey Hargrove, and Rick Nelson, who, <laughs> let's face it, Garden Party was a tremendous song. Eels hits it deep enough to left field going back is Mio, but he's going to make the catch, but it's deep enough that the run will score. So Vega scores on the sacrifice fly. Beavers put another run up on the board, and they lead it seven to nothing. Good job by Jose Vega to go to third on that uh, wild pitch. And it gives Darren Eels an on another RBI. Two outs, nobody on, one run in. And it'll bring up Duncan Hansen, who had a two-run double back in the first inning. So he's got 20 runs batted in on this season. Shows bunt, bunts at it, but it's foul. Good job by Darren Eels, two-strike count, getting that bat on the ball and hit it. Pretty deep out to left, maybe 350 down to uh, left center. But 348 down the lines, 370 in uh, the alleys, and then 390 to stra straight away. Wind isn't too harmful today uh, as opposed to what we've seen on other occasions, but still a pretty good poke. But a comfortable sacrifice fly. That breaking ball is outside to Duncan Hansen. Duncan takes that one down low, so it's two and one. Hanson with 240 and picked up the two runs batted in, so he has 20 on the season. Two for four in yesterday's game. Swing and a miss. Two and two on the Del Campo sophomore. David Henry, the left fielder to follow if Duncan can get a secondary rally going here for the Beavers in the second inning. Sharply grounded, but foul over by the dugout. Nice try over there by an unidentified member of the, I think the coaching staff. He didn't get a lot of air on his jump, so that's why I think it might have been a coach. He did not get close to getting the ball. It reminded me of the Stones McCoy try when he was coaching at the Potters, and the grounder goes by him, and he just kind of looks at it. Hanson hits a little squibber. That spell picked up. Nice job by Coach Jay in the uh, coaching box, and that was well done by him because he knew that's a very slow roller. He's going to make the effort. If it's hit any harder than that, he would just take a look at it. There's a whole, you know, protocol to being a base coach and fielding grounders, which Stones McCoy does not know yet. Hanson fouls that one away. Maybe you come out to the Potters games this year or check us out on Stones Radio Network's YouTube. We have all Lincoln Potters action. Uh, and we have 40 home games. And Stones, I'm sure, will weasel his way into coaching at least one of them. So you can come out and check him out. I think it's... Uh, it's aspirational, go above your means night, and he will be the coach outside and high. It's be something you can never be day, and it's, it's Stones is the coach. Hasn't lost a runner yet, though. I think he's done it twice. Actually, I think he did lose one guy once. That is outside. I think when you were, I think when you, you can defend yourself. I think you were coaching first, and you sent a guy in uh -huh. on a double, and he was out at second base. So actually, it was on a steal, and I didn't send him. Oh, okay. And he got thrown out. Okay. And then when he came back to the dugout, the half inning, we talked, and he goes, "I thought you asked me to go." <laughs> so it is your fault. And I said, and, "No." All right, go away now, David Henry, the hitter. I don't know, that sounds to me like it's your fault. You asked me to go, so that's your fault. I'm also okay. undefeated as a coach. That okay. is true. That is true. I will say that. 0-1 to David. Struck out his first time up. Hanson over at first base. Henry swings and misses at a ball in the dirt blocked by Perry. So it's quickly 0-2 on David. Followed by Willie Tatum in the Beavers order. 
put up one here in the second inning on the sacrifice fly from Darren Eels, and they lead this 7 to nothing. Hansen worked his way from a two-strike count all the way to a base on balls. He's at first base. Henry check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Rung up by the base umpire, so he is out on strike. One run on one hit. They left one. We go to the top of the third. Beavers on top, 7 to nothing. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Top of the third inning from Beaver Field. Beavers on top, seven to nothing. It'll be Noah Reamio starting us off, the number nine hitter. Then we go to the top of the order, Chase Christensen and Corey Williams for the Hawks, who so far have one hit in the game. That was a single by Griffin Harrison back in the first inning. Reamio hitting 213 on the season, seven runs batted in. He's a freshman of Franklin High School down in Elk Grove. Takes the first pitch right down the middle from Tyler Moore. 0-1. Moore with a strikeout and a base on balls. Two strikeouts and a base on balls in the first two innings. That's popped up right side. Willie Tatum going to give chase. Still going to give chase. And he makes the catch for the out. I like the way he does that a lot. He goes and hides behind the dugout down the first baseline so you can't see what's going on. And he makes the catch. So good play by Willie Tatum on that, you know, kind of like surreptitious catch of the pop fly, and that'll bring up Chase Christensen, who struck out to lead off the game. He is uh, 0 for 1, 2 for 5 yesterday, came in at 310. Inside and inside to the point where it hit him in the back, so Christensen will go down to first base. Hit by a pitch. Second free pass to first base by Tyler Moore and bring up Corey Williams who hit a fly ball to a pretty deep center field back in the first inning. But he was uh, retired, so he is 0 for 1, batting at 314 on the year. Elk Grove High School in Elk Grove, California for Corey Williams. He is a sophomore. Takes that one high for a ball 1-0. Tatum, Reynolds, Eels, and Griffiths on the infield. Babata. In center field, Henry in left, Wanalski in right, and Duncan Hansen behind the plate for Tyler Moore, who throws over to Tatum at first base to chase to chase Chase Christensen back. That's a tough one. Okay. Just because you have a microphone doesn't mean you always have to say stuff. Good looking pitch by Tyler Moore in there for a strike. One ball and one strike. Griffin Harrison. To follow, a very hot hitter. Three hits yesterday, one hit already today for the Hawks. There goes the runner. The pitch is fouled off on an inside fastball to Williams. And Christensen, who had a pretty good jump, and is, <laughs> is that second. He's looking back toward home plate like, come on, man, I had it. That's just my interpretation. I don't have subtitles or anything. But I am a body language expert, allegedly. One and two now. Williams with the home run has driven in 23 runs on the season. 
Fouls that one out of play down the right field line, and we'll go again at one ball and two strikes. I think I just might go out there and take a walk down the pass into that wooded area down there. It looks pretty, really inviting. Get a little exercise between innings. I will get lost. Yes, I will. That is in there. Call strike three. Maybe the best pitch Tyler Moore has thrown today. He put a little bit extra on that one and found the location he wanted. Two outs, his third strikeout of the game, and that does bring up Griffin Harrison. Three for six yesterday, one for one today. 3-11 on the campaign with five home runs. He's driven in 30. Right hand hitting Harrison. Playing at shortstop for the Hawks. Moore goes over to first base. Griffin out of Vacaville High School in Vacaville, California, of the Bulldogs. The Vacaville High School is located in Vacaville, California. There goes the runner again. Swing and a miss. The throw by Hanson is going to be too late. It's knocked down by Jaden Reynolds out there. Another good jump by the Hawks, and Christensen is at second base with two outs and an 0-1 count on Griffin Harrison, looking for his 31st run better in the season. I think I should tell him that Vacaville High is in Vacaville. I think he already knows that. Oh, yeah, got to got to put the info out there as Reynolds does shade over towards second base. He goes to third. The throw by Hanson is going to be high. They put it down. He is safe. Just a little bit too high on that throw. Tag was slapped down by Brett Griffiths, but uh, not in time. I think we got... I think he put up two fingers, 0-2. I do believe he did. Okay, well. That's it high to left field, hit well. Henry's going back, still chasing it, still chasing it, and it is out of here. Griffin Harrison with a home run to left field and the first two runs up on the board for the Hawks. They're back in it. The score now 7-2 in favor of the Beavers. So the hit batter comes around to hurt the Beavers as Harrison gets his sixth home run of the season, pushes his RBI count out to 32 and also his second home run in, the, in two games. David Henry with some great uh, pursuit of that. They're going to take a minute and make sure David ran into the fence out there, which looked like it Gives a little bit, but he is going to kind of walk around a little bit and get some attention out there as Harrison puts his sixth home run over the left field fence. And as we mentioned earlier, Stones McCoy, uh, the Beavers, even though they've got seven runs, you know, you've, you're facing a team that had 16 yesterday, so you know they're going to be coming back. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're, they, they're fighting and clawing just like we fight and claw every single game. They're not going to go away. So, yeah, you, you just want to build on the lead. And, uh, you know, they've had a couple of shutdown innings. That's really nice. But uh, you've given up two here now, top of the third. You want to stop that here with two outs and uh, get back into the, your offense and uh, try to get those runs back. Okay, well, it looks like we have a second here as they're going to make sure David Henry is okay. And we talked about it. We alluded to it a little bit earlier, Stones McCoy, as a coach. Talk a little bit about uh, uh, our association with the Lincoln Potters and uh, and what what all that, that entails every Absolutely. summer. Absolutely. So, uh, I mean, for the people who don't know, we've been involved with broadcasting the Lincoln Potters for about the last seven years. Yep. And uh, we'll be back again this year. We bring everything that you see here uh, and then some we bring out to the Lincoln Potters. And they have a great atmosphere, you know, in between innings. They have all kinds of fun stuff. And we will be there to bring you guys every minute of the action. LincolnPotters.com for tickets and information. Thank you, Stones McCoy. Noah Cantor will be the hitter now. He flew out to right field his first time up. Takes the fastball in for a strike. Griffin Harrison injects a dose of reality into the proceedings as the Beavers riding high with the 7-0 lead. Still 7-2. That's another good-looking pitch by Tyler Moore. 0-2 quickly on Noah Cantor. No balls, two strikes on Noah. Reaches out, pokes it into right field. Wanalski going to give chase. Reaches up and makes the catch. A well-hit ball just for reaching out and poking it, but flies out to right field. Two runs on a hit. 
We go to the bottom of the third inning. Beaver still on top, this time 7-2. to two. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Placer County's best-kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. Loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small-town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. We used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and and people notice it, and they can see it. Got dragged there, and I did. What? <laughs> He's an actor. Oh crap! Who cares? Uh, you got the rest of your life to. Bottom of the third inning, Beavers on top, 7-2. to two. Willie Tatum, Marcus Pabata, then Brett Griffiths, 8-9-1 and one for the Beavers here in the bottom of the third after the Griffin-Harrison home run narrowed the gap from 7-5 to five for ARC. Tatum with an RBI single back in the first inning, his 10th run bat in the season. Villanueva, the second pitcher for the Hawks in this one. Michael Frey that started. Villanueva came in and relieved him two-thirds of the way through inning number one. His first delivery is a little bit outside to Willie, who takes outside again, 2-0. and oh. Jones were mentioning the uh, Lincoln Potters. Just want to remind you, you can subscribe. Go ahead and subscribe to uh, Stones Radio Network's YouTube. Subscribe to ARC Athletics YouTube, of course, but so many of you have done that. It's very heartening to see the numbers on the subscribers. That is outside for a ball, but if you want to watch Lincoln Potters baseball, Stone Trade Network's YouTube is a, a good place to do so. We've got pre games, we got post games, we got between games, we got all kinds of managers interviews, just regular people interviews. Three oh pitches outside for a ball. And I thought my theory of faking the bunt and getting the call first strike was gonna be in there. I thought he was gonna get it, but ball too far outside. Tatum's on for the second time, and here's Marcus Babata who was hit by a pitch his first time up. I'm sure he would like to reach base a little less painfully this time. Marcus also at a Bear Creek High School, batting at 133 with seven runs batted in. He got one of those yesterday. So technically it might be eight because they may not have updated the website. That happens occasionally. Babata takes it on the outside corner for a strike. Our new scoreboard operator totally gets it. 0-1 oh, pitch. Marcus takes inside corner for a strike. A very good-looking pitch from Villanueva. The breaking ball from the left-hander from Laguna Creek. Puts him up. N no balls and two strikes. In the bottom of the third out here from Beaver Field. Very pleasant morning. Probably afternoon by now. I haven't looked at the clock. Not yet. Outside, nice job blocking. But going on is Tatum. He slides in, and he is in there. Good job. Very aggressive base running by Willie Tatum. Is a Really fine job by Perry behind the plate to block that. He came up throwing, and Willie Tatum, if he hadn't taken off right away, wouldn't have been able to make it, but he is in there. Changing a couple words with Griffin Harrison out there. Probably like, nice hit, dude. Way to go. I got that's high and inside. And again, I don't know that's exactly what they said. We don't have subtitles. But I'm a body language expert. Two and two on Babata. Another more activity in the pen for the Hawks. We'll get that name and number to you as soon as Stone uses his binoculars. Check swing. Did he go? They're saying he did. And Babata is out on strikes. Throw goes down. And Tatum's going to try to go to third. The throw's going to be in plenty of time. And he is out. Taking advantage, he thought, of the throw to first base. But he is thrown out at third for the second out of the inning, and that brings up Brett Griffiths, who has been hitting so hot, you don't want to take base runners off the bases. But Willie's aggressiveness, which served him so well earlier, not so well there. Is a good job by Perry to get it down to Pernetti, and he turned around and gunned it across the diamond to Corey Williams. So two outs here in the third, and here's Griffiths. Brett takes a strike. He had singled in the first inning and scored, and then again in the first inning he singled a run in. So he is two for two. 
So it looks like Gannon Castle is in there. I tell you, I got to tell you, I, you know, I don't usually say this, but they have some great names on this team. I mean, Grafton Short sounds like a place that, you know, from Bridgerton or something. And Gannon Castle, I swear I went on vacation there. I've been to Gannon Castle. Umpire calls time because he was chuckling over our repartee. I think he gave a ball. I think it was a timing situation. Hit ground ball into the hole, right into right field for a base hit. So Shorts was playing over close to second base, and Brett Griffiths took the ball right in the spot he would be. He's got three hits in this one, and he is at first base with two outs and White Winalski. And again, that brings in Kent. You, you wish you had that other base runner back on uh, second, even if he could only go to third in that. And Tatum may well have scored from second on that one. It's not a well hit ball. It was soundly hit, but not overly so. So it didn't get out to right field that quickly. So here's Wynalski. Wyatt takes a breaking ball inside corner for a strike. Good pitch from Villanueva. Puts him up 0-1 in the count. Jose Vega on deck. There goes Griffiths. The pitch is swan. Hit a high to right center field. Moving over the center fielder Christensen. And he'll make the catch. Well hit by Winalski, but Christensen runs it down. No runs. One hit, one left. We go to the top of the fourth. Beavers on top, 7-2. to two. Hi, I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in Town. We are a family-oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24-hour towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859, or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. Fast plung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86. The off speeder. Bruno strikes out. The he's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Welcome back to the top of the fourth inning. Beavers lead this one 7-2. It'll be Grafton, Schwartz, Cameron, Orr, and Ben Pernetti. 5-6-7 and seven against Tyler Moore, who's given up two runs on two hits. The big one, of course, the two-run home run from Griffin Harrison. Schwartz takes a fastball on the outside corner for a strike. Got a walk his first time up. Did Grafton, Schwartz hitting 288 on the year out of Davis High School. Fouls that one off, so it's quickly 0-2. Two ball, or 0 oh and 2 on Grafton Shorts. Sharply to the right of second. Reynolds has it on the backhand, goes over to first, and Hoff, it's going to be too late. Really a tough chance for uh, Jaden Reynolds as Shorts breaches it out. That is an infield hit for Grafton Shorts. Third hit of the game for the Hawks, just perfectly placed to the left of the pitcher and to the right of second, and Reynolds, even though he ran it down, really couldn't afford to stop and set. Tried to throw on the run, and Shorts is on. Cameron Orr, who flew out to left field his first time up, hit it pretty well. He's uh, hitting 235. Hit a home run in yesterday's game. There's a line drive left center field. That'll get down for a base hit. Going to try to cut it off. It'll go all the way to the fence. Or at second base, here comes the runner Shorts around third. He is going to score easily without a throw. And all of a sudden, it's 7-3 to three in favor of the Beavers. A two-run... Uh, RBI double for Cameron Orr, his 22nd run bad end of the season. Fourth hit of the game for the Hawks. And it'll bring up Ben Pernetti, who struck out his first time up. So Cameron Orr just drilled that one into a 
perfect spot as Babata tried to cut it off, couldn't get there. Brunetti came off three base on balls. There's a pickoff try at second base. It's going to get away, but backing up is Babata. Three runs on three hits in the last two innings for the Hawks. Bernetti with a home run and eight runs batted in, coming in at 178. Robert Perry on deck. Inside, gets away, but Hanson and Duncan runs it down. One ball, no strikes on Ben. Wearing number 44 for the Hawks, whose warm-up jerseys were very Houston Astro color. But regular jersey, not that much in the regular jersey look. Kind of grayish. Brunetti hits it sharply right at Reynolds at second base. Jaden's going to go to first. The only play he has moving over to third is Cameron Orr. One out here in the uh, fourth inning. It brings up Robert Perry, who fly to right field his first time up. Robert out of Del Campo High School, just a freshman. 318 coming in with seven runs batted in. He's got to run 90 feet away. High, short right field. When else he's going to make a long run. Wyatt has it. He's got a strong arm. He throws, but runner's coming in the throw and a hop and it gets away from Hanson. And scoring is Cameron Orr. Very tough play by Hanson. As it was kind of an in between hop. He tried to get it up near the shoulder and hopped over his. Hopped over his shoulder, and it's a sacrifice fly for Perry. Fourth run is in for the Hawks, and all of a sudden it is seven to four now in favor of the Beavers. And Noah Ria Mio will be the hitter. Chop foul at the plate. Noah popped out to first base in foul territory last time back in the third inning, so he is 0 for 1 so far in this one. Pops that one out of play, 0 and 2. Seven to four, top of the fourth. Hawks scored twice in the third and have scored twice here in the fourth. In the dirt. One ball, two strikes. That's in the dirt again. Evens the count up at two and two on Rio Mio. Top of the order, Chase Christensen follows. Single by shorts, a double by Orr, and then a sacrifice fly from Robert Perry. And the Hawks are back in touch. They had trailed 7-0. It's now 7-4. Line drive left field. Henry's going to give chase. He settles in underneath it and makes the catch for the third out. So two runs on two hits. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Beaver still on top, but just 7-4. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today.
Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is not eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, yes, not only... Bottom of the fourth inning. Beavers had the seven to nothing lead. That lead now has shrunk to seven to four. Jose Vega, Jane Reynolds, Darren Eels against Jace Villanueva, the second pitcher for the uh, Hawks, who came on in the first inning, in relief of Michael Freitas. Villanueva has given up one run on three hits. Here's Vega, who has a couple of base hits in this one. Takes that one down low for a ball. Got a couple of RBI back in the first inning. Scored a run after a single in the second. So Jose, who came in at 343, now has 10 runs batted in after becoming the designated hitter a couple weeks ago. Takes that one in the dirt for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Well, the wave has two strikeouts and two walks. Looks like uh, Ryan DeChain, a right-hander out of uh, Sheldon High School, is loosening up for the Hawks. That is ball three on Jose Vega, freshman from Highlands High School. Followed by Jaden Reynolds and then Darren Eels. Beavers with nine hits in the game so far, seven of those in the first inning. That's a strike. Since then, a single by Griffiths and a single by Vega have been the only two hits. That's fouled out of play. So going from 3-0 to 3-2 on Jose Vega. Villanueva out of Laguna Creek High School down in El Grove area. Chopped. That is down the third baseline. That's a fair ball picked up by the pitcher to first base, and it's going to get by first base. Vega will go to second base or backs it up and gets it in, but Vega is going to be safe at second base. So it's a single for Jose, and then he goes to second on the throwing air from the pitcher. And we're going to get a meeting at the mound here from uh, the Consumers River Hawks. It might be time. Let's see if they want to make a, a pitching change. We'll step away for just a second here. Vega at second base. We're in the bottom of the fourth, and the Beavers with a three-run lead. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise, from minor carpentry to drywall, electrical and flooring for property managers, landlords, and renters alike. We ensure that every job is completed to the highest standards, so you can have peace of mind. Contact us today to discover how Jeffers Resource Group can help keep your home in top shape. Meeting at the mound is over. Jay Spillenweva is still on the hill for the Hawks, and he will be facing Jaden Reynolds, who hit into a fielder's choice in the first and grounded the second in the second. Left handed second baseman, hitting 348 coming in. Hit well to right center field, giving chases, or, and he's not going to get there. He'll get all the way to the fence. Vega started up late. He's rounding third. Now he's going to be going ahead and going into third is Jaden Reynolds. It's an RBI triple for Reynolds and the Beavers pick up their eighth run. They lead it eight to four. Reynolds just turned on that one and got it by Orr in right field. And we are going to get a pitching change. A good time for us to take a step away again. Beavers now on top eight four. We're in the bottom of the fourth. We'll be back with that new pitcher right after this. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. we love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. Oh, I love baking. 
thing. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Ryan DeChain, the new pitcher from Sheldon High School, the third pitcher for the Hawks. Fred just started in Villanueva, and now DeChain making his fourth appearance of the season. Just three innings pitched so far on the season, three strikeouts and two walks. And Ryan will be facing Darren Eels with Reynolds down at third base, one run already in for the Beavers here in the fourth. They lead it 8-4, to four and the infield is in. That's hit. Out into center field, not deep. Here comes Christensen on it, and he makes the catch. The tag is made. The throw is excellent in the home plate, and holding at third base is Jaden Reynolds. So Eels flies the center, but not deep enough. As Christensen, first of all, covered a lot of ground, and then secondly made an excellent throw, which was cut off by Pernetti. As the runner wasn't going, here's Duncan Hansen. Infield still in with one out, and Reynolds at third, and Hansen, who has... Uh, a hit and a walk and two runs batted in is looking to get another one for the Beavers here. DeShane comes in from, I would say, not quite submarine but kind of sidearm. Sidearm submarine I had a submarine the other day, yeah. No. That is on the inside corner. So he's going to, one of those pitchers that he's going to take a little getting used to because you've got to kind of reorient yourself to, to where you pick up uh, his release point. Infield is in. Hanson takes outside. Nice job by Perry to uh, stop that one from going back to the uh, backstop. As with Reynolds at third base, he's very speedy. First baseman Ben Pernetti is uh, well off the first base line against Hanson. Duncan takes it outside. That's one of those uh, Sergio Romo pitches right there. The old Frisbee. I don't want to say old Giants because it sounds like it's all misty-eyed and stuff. I love Sergio Romo. <laughs> I miss him. 3-1. Hanson takes inside. Ball four. So first and third now does set up the double play situation. Let's see if the uh, Hawks, and they will move their middle infielders back into double play depth for David Henry, who struck out twice so far in this one. Good to see David still in the game, though, uh, after he ran into the fence a couple innings ago. Jones McCoy is kind of uh, mimicking or pantomiming that he thinks there might be a squeeze coming up. You can't say that, that the other team is monitoring the broadcast. Beavers, uh, Beavers have scored once already. Reynolds at third, now Duncan Hansen over at first. Let's see if Duncan takes off. Here's the pitch. He does not, and it's outside for a ball. The only problem with the fr Frisbee ball, if you don't, you know, you're not really locating it, patient hitters. They don't offer at it when it's out of the strike zone. One ball and no strikes. Hanson at first. Reynolds coming down the line there. Go No, Hanson fakes going, and it's inside for a ball. Deshane, I thought he might have got a little bit of the inside corner on that one. I'm not qualified to comment. Obviously, I would never hesitate to, or I never Oh, that's a strike. Like, I never question the umpire's call, except for the next pitch after I say that. <laughs> Two balls and one strike on David. Very professional. Henry swings and misses. Two and two. Willie Tatum to follow. The third pitcher to Shane. Breaking ball swung on and missed. So Henry is down on strikes and still at first and third, the Beavers, but Willie Tatum is coming up. He singled in a run back in the first and then walked in the third. So Willie is one for one. Beavers lead this one eight to four, but with a chance to put a couple more up on the board. Had a short fly out and then a strikeout. Tatum takes that outside, it gets away, but staying at third is Reynolds 
Going down to second is Duncan Hansen on the wild pitch. Reynolds playing it safe at third base. It wasn't off that far, and Perry on it very quickly. But now two runners in scoring position for Willie Tatum. One ball and no strikes. Sophomore out of Grant High School. Two-year starter, two-year player here for Coach Jay at American River College. Really takes inside for a ball, 2-0. Oh. Marcus Babata, the number nine hitter on deck. Tatum with 10 runs batted in on the season. 2-0 oh pitch. Inside that hit him. So he'll go down first, get on base for the third time today, three different ways. And that loads him up for Marcus Babata, the left-handed hitter. Interesting to see what the difference with a left-hander against the right-hander DeShane, who comes in basically, as we said, from the side. It's like Gannon Castle's back up again for the Hawks in their bullpen. See if that affects uh, the equilibrium there as the left-handed hitter against the right-handed DeShane. First pitch is on the outside corner for a strike. Base is loaded, two outs here in the fourth. Beavers lead it eight to four. Bada takes on the outside corner again, 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. That's outside for a ball. One and two, and that is the purest optimism there to uh, take an outside pitch after two outside strikes. But Mark is still alive at one and two. Outside, two and two. Sense to theme here uh, as uh, DeShane attacking the outside corner. Outfield medium deep, pulled around to the right a little bit for Marcus Pabana. Outside, ball three. So two outside, uh, outside strikes and then three outside balls, and we've got a full count with the bases loaded here in the fourth inning. High pop-up, short left field going out the shortstop, Harrison. Left fielder comes in and makes the catch. That is Mio with a nice running catch to end the inning. So one run, two hits, the left three. We go to the fifth inning. Beavers on top, eight to four. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Top of the fifth inning, top of the order for the Hawks. Chase Christensen, Corey Williams, Griffin Harrison against Tyler Moore. Out here for inning number five. He's given up four runs on just four hits. Christensen takes in there for a strike. He has struck out and been hit by a pitch. Has Chase. Came in at 3-10 on the season. We're going to foul at the plate, so it's 0-2. No balls, two strikes on Christensen, playing out in center field for the Hawks in this one. 
sharply down the third. That's a fair ball. Going to be a tough play by Griffiths across the diamond. What a play by Brett Griffiths. As far as he needed to throw it, as far as could possibly be on the diamond, and he guns down Christensen at first for the first out. Great defensive play by Brett, who also has three hits in the game. It'll bring up Corey Williams. The third baseman hitting at 314 is flied to center and struck out looking. Pop up. Reynolds going to go out. Here comes Wynalski. Gives way to Babata, and Marcus makes the catch in center field. So quickly, two outs here in the inning. And now here's Griffin Harrison, who you want to face with nobody on base. He's singled, and he has hit a two-run home run in this game. So he is five of his last eight with seven runs batted in and two home runs over these two games against the Beavers. So, yeah, you don't want anybody on base when Griffin's coming to the plate. The big right-handed hitting shortstop. Takes high and inside for a ball out of Vacaville High School, which we have uh, established in an earlier at bat. Is in Vacaville, California. Down the freeway there. Maybe in a 707, perhaps. 707. Line drive up the middle, base hit. Third hit for Harrison out of the five that the Hawks have in this game. And they'll bring up Noah Cantor, who has flied to right twice. Right-hand hitting DH is 0 for 2, hitting 260 on the year. Does have three home runs. Is driven in 28. Oak Grove High School, just a freshman. Fastball is down low for a ball, 1-0. Grafton Shorts on deck. Check swing, and he did go, and the ball gets through. It goes all the way back to the backstop. Is one ball and one strike. I want to make sure. Yes, it is, one and one. But Harrison now in scoring position at second base with two outs. Cantor had two runs batted in in yesterday's game. Fastball inside for a ball. Two balls, one strike. Check the runner at second base. 2 1 pitch. Waves at that one outside. 2 and 2. Moore checks the runner at second base. 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Big strikeout by Tyler Moore. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Beavers on top, 8 to 4. Hi, I'm Monica from East Body Shop in Town. We are a family oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hour towing. Our phone number is 916. 916- Six four five two eight five nine, or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here. Large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a super taco. We'd love to see you. Fast plung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86, the off speeder. Bruno strikes out the going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. Bottom of the fifth inning from Beaver Field. Beaver's on top 8-4. to four. 
Ryan Duchesne, the third pitcher for the Hawks, will face the top of the order. Brett Griffiths, Wyatt Winalski, and Jose Vega. Griffiths is hit on the leg by a pitch, and he will be on first base for the fourth time today. The previous three times was more impressive. He had hits, and he is gimping his way down to first base, and the Beavers do not want to see that as Brett has been one of the vital components in this season. So they're going to take as much time as they need for to make sure that he uh, has full function in the leg back. Singled and scored in the first, singled in a run, also in the first. Beaver scored six times in the first, then singled in the third. And he's going to get checked out. But I, I I wouldn't send out the train. I'd just send out a crutch. Just make sure that Brett stays in the game. If he has to kind of do the thing where he gets thrown out at second, that's fine. Sophomore out of Jesuit came into the game hitting 342. And he's three for three. He was three hits yesterday as well. And drove in three. Consensus in the press box is that we will wait and hold the game up until Brett is ready to go. So, yeah. And if that's a problem with the league, then they'll have to call us because we are definitely not al not allowing Mr. Griffiths to leave. And we say hey to a grandma up in Redding and great-grandma in Oregon. Your boy is very valued down here. We are not going to continue. In fact, if he can't make it to the game on any occasion, we'll move back to start time. But that's a problem. Here's Wyatt Winalski. He doubled in the first inning, struck out looking, then hit a deep fly ball to right in the third, and he lines that one down the left field line and out of play over by where the Beaver, uh, Beaver bullpen is alleged to be. We never really see. There's too many screens there. We do see shadowy figures like, uh, you know, the uh, surveillance footage at 7-11. Winalski takes outside. One and one on Wyatt, hitting 250 coming in. Left-handed hitter out of San Juan High School. He's got Griffiths at first. Inside it gets away, and Brett's going to go ahead and gut it out and get down to second base on the wild pitch. And if Robert Perry can't stop it, then it can't be stopped as he has uh, blocked a bunch of them here already in the first four innings today. Griffiths at second base now, and Winalski two balls and one strike. Jones McCoy was out of the booth doing some research, doing some reconnaissance uh, for us. Just checking to see, make sure Brett was okay. That's a good looking pitch in there for a strike. Looks like Andrew Lockhart. And uh, Gannon Castle. Chopper down to first base. Scooped up down there. Nice play by Pernetti. He's going to get. Winalski, but Wyatt moves the run along as Brett goes into third base. So he is at third with one out. Beavers couldn't bring runners in it from third with uh, no outs back in the uh, fourth. They got one, but they had another one sitting there. And it'll bring Jose Vega, who has three hits in this game. He singled in two runs in the first, then singled and scored in the second. Had an infield single and went to second on an air on the throw and then eventually scored back in the fourth. So Jose, three for three, two RBI and two runs scored. He's got a runner down at third, infield in, and he takes a Frisbee pitch outside for a ball, 1-0. The freshman out of Highlands hitting 343. Coming into the game, picked up RBI number nine and ten. Pops that one up. That's not going to be deep enough. Tristensen coming in. He's still coming in, still coming in, and... It's going to drop for a base hit. They pick it up, but it's not in time. Griffiths will score on the Vegas fourth hit of the game, and that one is perfectly placed as Christensen playing very deep. Couldn't come in and get it. Griffiths scores the Beavers' ninth run. Another RBI for Vega gives him three today. He is four for four with three RBI, and Jaden Reynolds comes to the plate. Jaden had a fielder's choice in the first, grounded the second in the second, then had a triple and drove in a run back in the fourth inning. Swings and fouls that one off. His 12th run bat in the season for Jaden. Came into the game at 348. That is outside for a ball. One and one on Jaden. Freshman out of Bella Vista. 
Shane's pitch has popped up again, and this time it's the second baseman. Shorts waits for it to come down and makes the catch over his head for the second out. Two outs, and uh, Darren Eels will be the hitter. Darren's doubled, hit a sacrifice fly, and flied to center, so he is one for two in this one. Picked up RBI number 19 back in the second inning. Brad Griffith scored a run, his 26th run scored of the season. That one's hit down the left field line out of play. Turned on that one a little bit too quickly and fouled it. 0-1 on Darren Neals, sophomore from Bear Creek High School down in Stockton. Duncan Hansen in the on-deck circle. Vega leading at first base. Eels takes a ball down low. Nice block by Perry. Michael Freitas started, then Jace Bill in the waiver for the Hawks, and Ryan Duchesne came on in the fourth inning. We are in the bottom of the fifth. That's outside. Outside. I think he closed his eyes. Outside corner, as I was saying, one and two. It was, it's an outside game. One and two now on Darren. Inside for a while. He turned away, but as they turned away, he looked back to see if the call was a strike. Two and two. Line drive, that's foul. Hit very hard down the left field line. We'll do it again at two balls and two strikes. Beavers with six in the first, one in the second, one in the fourth, and one here in the fifth. Eels takes ball three. Two in the third and two in the fourth for the Hawks. Tyler Moore came out and shut them down on one hit back in the fifth. So he has gone through five innings. 3-2 pitch. A little squibber up the middle. And Harrison will make the catch in short left center field for the out. So Beavers score once in the fifth. We go to the top of the sixth. They lead it 9-4. to four. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed the job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Top of the sixth inning from Beaver Field. Mark the Phantom Low here with you. Stones McCoy on the controls. Chris Toy on assignment to get him ready for the rest of the season. He will be back with our next broadcast, which is Saturday. We'll do a doubleheader against San Joaquin Delta. That'll be a softball doubleheader for the Beavers. Here's Grafton Shorts. The first hitter swings and misses. Fouls it into the catcher's glove. To be more precise, 0-1 on Grafton, who has walked and singled in this one. That's a noon doubleheader on Saturday. Beavers and the Mustangs. Fastball misses outside. Tyler Moore between, sitting between 85, 86, and 89 so far on the Jugs gun. So getting it up there pretty well. Swung on and fouled, one and two. Got two games here in baseball. Uh, this this series will conclude, I believe, a Friday game back at Kasumna as we've got 
home games next week. Swing and a miss. Got him on strike. Second straight strikeout for Tyler Moore. Gives him five on the game and brings up Cameron Orr, who has flied deep to left field and doubled in a run. That was back in the fourth inning, so he is one for two. Picked up RBI number 22, did Cameron Orr, out of uh, Ponderosa High School, the Bruins, up at Shingle Springs. A Bruin is a bear, Stones. Come on. Like the UCLA Bruins? See, let me explain it to you. Just want to miss. See, the California Golden Bears, they're the, the Golden Bears, and the UCLA is in the California system, and they are like after Cal, so they are the Bruins to reflect the Bears, you see? And I'm trying to explain that to you. And then we got the Ponderosa Bruins, also Bear Rivers, the Bruins, I believe. So we got a lot of Bruins around. No, you don't call them the Bears. They're the Bruins. It's a, it's a particular type. All right, well. Grizzlies is another good name, but the people are called the Grizzlies. Nobody's called the Polar Bears. That is a good-looking pitch, but it's a ball to Cameron Orr. You can't be, what are you going to be, like the Lincoln High Polars? That doesn't sound right. No, no, 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed 2-2. Two and two. Polars sound too much like molars. <laughs> yeah. No, you're not going to bring Winnie the Pooh as your mascot. You get a, you're going to have trademark problems anyway. 2-2 two, two pitch on the way to Cameron. Swing and a miss. Three strikeouts in a row for Tyler Moore. And here is Ben Pernetti. Struck out and grounded to second has Ben Pernetti in this one. So shorts and or down on strikes. Six strikeouts now for Tyler Moore. Pernetti takes a fastball inside. One ball and no strikes. That misses the outside corner, so it's 2-0 quickly on Ben Pernetti. Robert Perry, the catch for the number eight hitter in the on-deck circle for the Hawks. You still have activity in their bullpen. Again, shadowy figures in the Beavers' bullpen. That's down low for a ball. Tyler Moore have to be getting up near, I would say, in the 85 to 90 pitch range. But I. 3 0 to Bernetti, who struck out and grounded out. Walked three times yesterday. Takes the call strike on the inside corner. 3 1. Beautiful day out here at Beaver Field. A little bit of breeze, but uh, nothing too bad. 3-1 pitch. Hit sharply down to first. Willie Tatum stays down, picks it up. He's going to flip it over to the pitcher covering. And Tyler Moore, another excellent inning. 1-2-3. We go to the bottom of the six. Beavers stay on top, 9-4. Lincoln Potter's Baseball. Placer County's best-kept secret is back for another exciting summer at historic McBean Stadium. Loaded with fun for the whole family. Local beer, wine, and eats. Fireworks, giveaways, theme nights, kid zone, and more. Come join in the fun and enjoy small town baseball with Major League Entertainment. Tickets on sale now at LincolnPotters.com. Lincoln Potters Baseball. Come on out and join in the fun. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed the job. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought. And... Uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality and, and people notice it, they can see it. Don't doubt it, don't doubt it. I got dragged there and I didn't, what, <laughs> he's an actor? Oh crap, who cares? Uh, you got the rest of your life to be, you know, serious. But so Just tweet it out. And then don't really and then respond. run away. Yeah. No, I think it happens to some of us. Maybe it sounds a little personal to you, but uh, I, I'm not. I didn't want me. Yeah, to I don't know. That it way. just maybe I, sounds I, like that. Generally, I know fine. You, again, you're a very bright guy. Yeah. You see right, right into right my soul, you. my friend. My, That's why I have so many jobs because people think I'm funny <laughs> when they're driving home. <laughs>
Bottom of the sixth, new pitcher for the Hawks, Andrew Lockhart, making his 11th appearance, the freshman. 21 and two-thirds innings, 17 strikeouts, 12 walks, a 6.23 ERA, and he is 1-1 one and one on the season, so he will come out and face the Beavers. Duncan Hanson, David Henry, Willie Tatum, 6-7-8. and eight. Like Danny Gallego might be on deck to pinch it for the Beavers. Last ball on the corner for a strike. So Hanson, then Danny Gallego, and then Willie Tatum. Outside for a ball to Duncan Hanson. Two balls and one strike on Duncan, who has doubled in two runs in the first and walked in the second and walked in the fourth. Takes it inside for a ball, three and one. Freitas started, then Villanueva, DeChain, and now Andrew Lockhart. Foul back to the screen. Three balls, two strikes on Hanson. We are in the bottom of the sixth inning from Beaver Field. And his high, ball four. So Hanson has a two-run double and three walks on the day. And that will bring up the pinch hitter, Danny Gallego. Now batting number 12, Danny Gallego. Andrew Lockhart is a, a freshman from Antelope High School. And Danny Gallego is making his first appearance of the game for the Beavers. Batting for David Henry with Hanson at first base. He shows bunt, pulls it back, and it's outside. Danny hitting at 206. Takes high for a ball. So it's 2 0 on Danny. Really Tatum to follow. Beavers with six in the first and then single runs in the second, fourth, and fifth to offset two in the third and fourth for consumers. And it's down low. Three and oh. Hawks have a left hander loosening up in their pen as the 3 0 pitch on the way. That's outside and high ball four. So a couple of walks by Lockhart here as he enters in the bottom of the six and puts runners at first and second, brings up Willie Tatum. That is Gannon Castle, the left-hander, who has been up and down all game, it seems like, for Kasumis. But now with Tatum up here, with two on and nobody out, we think we'll see Willie try to drop one down. He has singled in a run in the first, then he walked in the third, and he was hit by a pitch in the fourth. So. He's had a busy day at the plate already, the sophomore at a Grand High School. Ten runs batted in the season, came in at 153. Brunetti is up at first base, anticipating the uh, bunt. Let's see if it is. He does not bunt. He swings and fouls it off the catcher's mask back to the screen. 0-1 oh on Willie Tatum. Looks down at Coach Jay, coaching at third base. Corey Williams at third base, kind of even with the bag, and Pernet, or excuse me, Pernetti at first, still up on the infield grass. Here's the pitch. Fouled back to the screen, so no thought of the sacrifice from Willie Tatum. Oh, and two. Wind's kind of helping if you go by the flags in center field today. Tatum fouls that one off down the right field line off the screen. Stays 0-2 on Willie. Marcus Babata on deck, the number nine hitter. O two 2 to Tatum. Takes it outside corner, call strike three. And Tatum immediately looking back as that one looked to be headed outside. One out. And here's Marcus Babata. 
As Tatum, I think, got a warning from the umpire. I'll call it a conduct warning. And I think that in this case, I think Willie feels totally justified in getting a conduct warning on that one. Here's Babata, who has been hit by a pitch, struck out, and fly to left. So Marcus is 0 for 2. Williams still up at third. Babata takes a fastball outside. Brunetti moved back and is playing deep at first base. So we got 10 mile an hour winds. Gus up almost 19 to 20, but headed straight out to center field, which is very odd. But it may be just this time of day. Babata takes outside corner, as I was saying, for a strike, one and one. One ball, one strike on the sophomore out of Bear Creek High School. Playing out in center field for the Beavers in this one. Swings and misses at that one. One and two. Might have been the best pitch that uh, Lockhart has thrown right there. A fastball down the middle. Brett Griffiths on deck, the top of the order for the Beavers. Misses outside with that one. Evens it up at two and two on Marcus. Okay, you go at first. Duncan Hansen out at second base. And it misses. Three balls and two strikes. Full count on Babata. Takes it, call, strike three. So two call, third strikes in a row for the Beavers with two on, and that'll bring up Brett Griffiths, who singled in the first, the first time he scored. The second time he singled the first, he drove in a run. Then he singled in the third, was hit by a pitch in the fifth, and eventually came around and scored. So two run score gives him 26 on the season. One run batted in gives him 16. Came in at 342, and he's got runners at first and second. Takes that one. On the outside corner for a strike. 0 oh, 1. Brad, a sophomore out of Jesuit High School. He does have that opening at second base where he hit the ball through on his third base hit. Line drive right back up the middle, right to the second baseman who was playing. I don't know if he got there in time. No, he's safe at second base. Great play by Shorts to get the ball. Then he ran to try to get the force play, and it will be a base hit for Griffiths. It will load the bases, and it will bring up Wyatt Winalski. That was a shot right back up the middle through Lockhart, but Short's playing right in the right place. Got it on the outfield grass almost and tried to get to second, and credit to uh, Danny Gallego for getting down to second base in time. And it's the bases loaded now. Here's Winalski. Takes a strike down the middle. Wyatt is doubled, struck out, fly deep to right, and grounded to first. So he is one for four with a run scored. It was one for five with a run scored yesterday. That's in the dirt, gets away. Coming in is Hanson. The throw to the pitcher covering. It's wild, and Hanson score. Here comes the second run around. The throw to the plate. Tag is too late. And Danny Gallego scores from second base, and the Beavers score twice here in the inning on the wild pitch, and that now lead it 11 to 4. Brett Griffith's going to end up at third base. It'll be a wild pitch. And then an error on the throw from the catcher that allows uh, Gallego to score. Second error on the day for the uh, Beavers. Wanowski takes inside. Did he go? He did not. Looked like he might have. So a big break right there as the ball got away. Very aggressive from Duncan Hanson to go right away. And he was going to score anyway, the throw being off mar the mark, and Gallego very alertly kept on going and beat the throw to the plate. Inside for a ball. We think it's three balls in one strike. There's a lot of confusion, a lot of craziness going on. Beavers have scored twice in the inning. Wynalski takes ball four. That gets away, but not far enough. As Griffiths, good job to hold up on that. And that brings up the hottest hitter, one of the hottest hitters for the Beavers. Four hits for Jose Vega today, and he comes up to the plate for the fifth time. And we're going to have a meeting at the mound, and we'll take a break. We're going to have a pitching change. We look for Gannon Castle to end of the game. We are in the bottom of the six. Beavers have scored twice. They lead it 11-4. to four. Hi, I'm Jennifer Hall. 
I'm Monica from Ace Body Shop in town. We are a family oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hour towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859 or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco. We'd love to see you. Bass flung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86, the off meter. Bruno strikes out the... He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18 kidder. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5. New pitcher is Gannon Castle for the Hawks, making his seventh appearance of the season. He is 1-0, seven innings pitched. Three strikeouts, five base on balls, a 5.14 ERA for Gannon Castle. The left-hander will come on to face Jose Vega, who has had a pretty good day for the Beavers. Singled in two runs in the first, then he singled and scored in the second. Singled and scored in the fourth, and singled in a run in the fifth. He's got Brett Griffiths over at third. And he has Wyatt Winalski it, at first. Beavers have scored twice in this inning. Just the one hit on the inning. Three base on balls issued by the uh, Hawks. And then the wild pitch throwing air resulted in the two-run scoring. Vega at 343 coming in. The freshman from Highland strides up to the plate, and we are ready to go. Three for six with a home run yesterday for Jose. Four for four with three runs batted in today and two scored. He has now 11 RBI on the season. He does have Griffiths down at third base. First pitch is high for a ball from Castle. One ball and no strikes. Uh, consumed as Oaks High School again in Castle, just a freshman. His second pitch is in there for a strike, and there is activity milling around. Shadowy figures in the Beavers' bullpen as well. Tyler Moore has been sitting down a long time after completing his sixth inning of work. That's a line down the left field line. It may curve foul, and it does. Jose all over that one. And it's one ball and two strikes now. Griffiths at third at first, White Winalski. One-two pitch coming from Castle. Outside and high, ball two. Two and two. Winalski looking to stay put over at first base and give Jose Vega a chance to swing the bat here. Joey Garienti warming up for the Beavers. That one is outside and high. Curveball got away from Castle. We'll count on Jose Vega with Jaden Reynolds to follow. Winoski will be taken away from uh, taken off from first. There he goes. The three two pitch is popped up out of play by Vega on a pitch which was probably ball four, but he couldn't afford to wait and see. Why would all skill have to go back to first? Although I wouldn't fault him for trying to stay at second and see if everybody's paying attention. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you get so fixated as an umpire, you're not really looking at the running. You're thinking, well, he'll do what he's supposed to do. And you kind of count on the, the goodness of man. And that is just a mistake. We'll do it again with a full count. Here it is. Fouled off again. Now I definitely try staying there this time. 
<laughs> it's not it's not a deception, it's just fatigue. That's why when I was playing I I you know, cut down the running as, as much as possible. Sometimes I made outs on purpose so I wouldn't have to run. At least that's what I told myself. <laughs> this is a fair ball in right field. Orr is giving chase over by the line. He makes the catch after a long run for the out. So two runs, one hit, left two. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Beavers now on top 11-4. to four. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise, from minor carpentry to drywall, electrical and flooring for property managers, landlords, and renters alike. We ensure that every job is completed to the highest standards, so you can have peace of mind. Contact us today to discover how Jeffers Resource Group can help keep your home in top shape. Told Rick, I said, "This is the guy that's going to lead us out of the. <laughs> he can't even lead us out of the. He can't get lot. out of the parking lot." <laughs> so we just, just moments ago, the oh. a rhubarb, a brouhaha yes. between Mr. Reynolds, the great Jerry Reynolds, and the great Mr. Basketball. Top of inning number seven from Beaver Field. Beavers lead it eleven to four. It'll be Robert Perry. It'll be Noah Rea Meow. Me, oh, excuse me, and then it'll be Chase Christensen, 8 9 and 1. Perry takes a fastball in the inside corner. Robert is flied to right and hit a sacrifice fly to right, so he is 0 for 1 with an RBI. Picked up RBI number 8. That was back in the fourth inning. Swing and fouls that one to catcher's glove. 0 oh, and 2. Ray Amio on deck, and then Christensen. Perry 0 for 2 with an RBI yesterday in the consumedness win. There's a fastball call, strike three outside Just corner. Looking. Tyler Moore, strikeout number seven for Tyler, and he'll bring up Rhea Mio. Tyler Moore with 29 strikeouts through 30 innings, so kind of on that pace here. He also was issued 14 base on balls. He walked one and hit one so far today. So is Rhea Mio. He has popped to first and fly to left, so he is 0 for 2. First pitch is down low and outside for a ball. 1 0. Seventh inning stretch between innings with uh, Stones McCoy. Look forward to that as he will recap the game so far from his unique vantage point and try to tell you how he would have done it better when he was a guy. When he was a guy, like a, a student, like a, a player, you know, because he's always trying to get on wherever we do a game. He always wants to get on the team. He's going back to college for this one. Outside. 3 0. He's just going to go back as a regular student and then try to join the team. Coach Jay has said, you know, you know, he's rolled out the carpet for him. He said, if you want to come out, Stones, you can come out. Three and one after that fastball. And there are no guarantees you're going to make the squad, especially since you can't come to practice because you're always working. But other than that, you're welcome to come out. Come out on game day, put on a uniform. I'm not going to get you in that often. That is inside for a ball. So, Rio Mio gets the base on balls. Third free pass from Tyler Moore. And that brings up Chase Christensen, the top of the order, who has struck out and hit by a pitch and grounded to third on a tremendous play by Brett Griffiths back in the fifth inning. So Chase is 0 for 2, came in at 310 on the season. Corey Williams to follow, then Griffin Harrison. Misses high with that one for a ball. 1 and 0.
swinging and a miss at the fastball. Probably had as much on that one as he had on any pitch so far in the uh, game. So Tyler Moore evens it up at 1-1 one and one on Chase Christensen. Chase with three home runs on the season has driven in 22. Inside for a ball. Hawks are 13 and 18 on the season, 3 and 13 in conference. Beavers 8 and 20 and 2 and 11 in Big 8 play. Two teams will finish this series on Friday and a consumeness. Hit sharply into the holes by Griffiths to second for one to first. Did he get him? No, he did not. Christensen beats it out at uh, first base, but a great play again by Griffiths, who's taken two hits away from Christensen in this one. So Chase is at first with the fielder's choice, but Mayo is retired from third to second at second base. And so with two outs, here's Corey Williams. Looks like that one might get in the hole and get into left field, but Brett goes to his left, flags it, gets it to Reynolds at second. Jaden turns it to first, but Christensen with good speed is uh, safe at first base. Williams takes a fastball around the back, so he'll go down to first base. And if possible, the way it looked like, they might want to give him two bases because that one looked like it hurt a little bit. More importantly, though, it brings up Griffin Harrison, and I think we're going to get a meeting at the mound. We may get a pitching change from the Beavers' side. We're going to take a break here with two outs in the top of the seventh, and the Beavers on top, 11-4. to four. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise, from minor carpentry to drywall, electrical and flooring for property managers, landlords, and renters alike. We ensure that every job is completed to the highest standards, so you can have peace of mind. Contact us today to discover how Jeffers Resource Group can help keep your home in top shape. Meeting at the mound is over. Meeting in the press box also over, as we all were discussing what we would do in this situation, and I was right. That's all that needs to be said. We don't need to go into any details or anything. So Griffin Harrison is singled twice and homered with two on here in the seventh inning. First pitch is a ball. Out of Vacaville High in Vacaville, California, we've established that. Singled in the first, two-run homer in the third, and then singled again in the fifth. Came in at 311 and hit his sixth home run of the season. Swings and misses at that one. One ball and one strike. Had a home run yesterday. We had a guy, was it Blaine French, I think, who homered against us, number 99, who homered against us three games in a row. I didn't care for that. I did not care for that in the slightest. <laughs> I'm going to call his professor and get him thrown out of school. Fastball on the outside corner, strike two. One ball and two strikes. We've got at second base Chase Christensen on Corey Williams over at first, still painfully over at first, and that one hurt me, the hit by pitch. One and two, Hanson setting up outside. Here's the pitch. Hits the outside corner. No, but he hit his target perfectly. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes. Two outs here in the seventh inning. Tyler Moore on the hill for the Beavers. That one a little overthrown outside and low. Three and two. Noah Cantor on deck. 0 for 3 so far in this game, but he does have three home runs on the season. Three and two on Harrison. Runners will be going with two outs. Moore taking extra time to pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on strikes in the off-speed pitch. So Harrison down on strikes. No runs. Two left. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Beaver still on top, 11-4. To Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here. Large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kinds of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a super taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. 
Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. Oh, I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part is about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Bottom of the seventh, Jaden Reynolds will start us off. I guess I forgot the, the Stones McCoy seventh inning stretch report, so we'll have to do that after this inning. We were so busy arguing over which one of us was right that we uh, forgot to uh, talk about it for publication, so to speak. Reynolds swings and misses. One ball and one strike on Jaden, who is uh, hit into a fielder's choice, grounded to second, tripled in a run in the fourth, and then popped to second in the fifth. So he is one for four. Gannon Castle pitches inside to the go, and he did not. I say he did, but I'm not going to tell anybody because what if they what if they research it and find out that I'm right and it's a strike against us? So I can't say anything. Two and one. That one is down low for a ball. Three and one. Castle, the fifth pitcher for the Hawks. They had Freitas, Villanueva, Deshane, Lockhart, and now Gannon Castle. It's ball four. So Reynolds is on with the base on balls to start off the bottom of the seventh, and uh, Darren Eels will come to the plate. Darren has doubled, then hit a sacrifice fly, fly to center, and popped it short. Josh Size warming up in the pen, number four out of Galena High School for the Hawks. Outside for a ball. That would make Josh the sixth pitcher if he comes in. It also would make me have to figure out if that's the right way to say his name, C-Z-Y-Z. It's either C-Z or size. I like size. That's good. Is that what I said? Popped up, out of play. Well, when you have two Zs, you can have one Z be silent. So it means Psy. So C-Z-Y is Psy. I like that. A very good job by the linguist, Mr. Stones McCoy. Swing and a miss off speed pitch from Castle, and Eels is behind in the count, one and two. Darren at 219 coming in, picked up RBI number 19 back in the second inning. Had a hit and RBI last in yesterday's game as well, won by the Hawks. Swing and a miss. Castle gets the strikeout for the first out here in the seventh. And it will bring up Duncan Hansen, who's been very busy today. A two-run double in the first and walked in the second, fourth, and sixth. Scored a run in the sixth on a wild pitch. Duncan was two for three yesterday, scored three times yesterday. So five runs scored in less than two games, or fewer than two games. Watches that one on the inside corner for a strike, 0-1. Danny Gallego who hit for David Henry back in the sixth and took over in left field on deck. Short lead at first by Reynolds. Castle's pitches misses for a ball, 1-1. One one. Wind still blowing out. Since 10 miles an hour, it seems, that seems like a little high. Okay, 10-15. to 15. Hanson pops that one up right side. It's going to be a long run for Orr going out to second baseman. The dive, he can't make the play. It drops in safely, and getting to second base is Jaden Reynolds. So it's the second hit of that type for the Beavers today, just a pop fly that the uh, outfielder was too far, too deep, couldn't get there and get it. So Hanson gets himself a base hit, his second. Reynolds played it perfectly. He was able to make it to second, even though he wasn't off too far, and he is at second base. And that'll bring up Danny Gallego, who walked in his only appearance back in the sixth and scored. Yeah. 
Castle's pitch is on the inside corner for a strike. 0 and 1. Willie Tatum on deck. Short's very close to second base. A strike in there again to Danny Gallego. Grafton Short's the second baseman, playing very close to second, keeping the runner close. Jaden Reynolds, but opening up a spot at traditional second base for the Beavers to hopefully take advantage of. Popped up, giving Chase the catcher Perry, but it is out of play. We got our service dog is just kind of tri is ch very much chilling down there in the front row. We had a guy down the first baseline, but he's taken off. A little spaniel looking guy that was down there, a little spaniel. He didn't look like he was going to stay the whole game anyway. He looked like he had something to do. Look out, that's inside. Two and two. You can always tell the dog has somewhere to be. You can tell, you know, he's giving you his attention, but he, he's thinking of something else, you know, because they do compartmentalize a lot, dogs. Two balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. He got him. Second strike out of the inning for Gannon Castle. And with two outs and two on, here's Willie Tatum. The sophomore out of Grant singled in a run back in the first and later scored himself, then walked in the third, was hit by a pitch in the fourth, and took a call third strike back in the sixth that I think he's probably going to be thinking about for at least until the next game. First time up against Gannon Castle. Willie takes inside for a ball. Marcus Babata on deck to bat next, hopefully in this inning for the Beavers, who lead it 11-4, six in the first, one in the second. One in the fourth and one in the fifth, two in the sixth. Willie Tatum asks for time as the ball is on the field. And I don't know how that ball got out of there from the bullpen because they're facing the wrong way to have the ball go out in the field. And so I don't want to bring in whoever threw that pitch. I'm just, I'm not the coach or anything, but if you throw it from the bullpen backwards onto the field, I don't want to see you in the game. I'm sorry. I'll speak to Coach Jay if I need to. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike on Willie Tatum. Could it have gone in the field from a different method, a different mode, other than being pitched? No. No, I'm not taking any second guesses. I just want that guy to sit down in the bullpen. Tatum swings and misses another off-speed pitch from Gannon Castle, and he is ahead of Willie. One ball and two strikes. Fourteen hits for the Beavers in this one. Tatum is it sharply to in the hole. Nice pickup by the third baseman. Goes to second for the out. That's Corey Williams, and that's an excellent play to get the force out. And if that ball gets through, that's a run for the Beavers. The fielder's choice to Tatum. Beavers don't score. We go to the top of the eighth. They are still ahead, 11-4. to four. Hi, I'm Monica from East Body Shop in Town. We are a family-oriented business. We've been in business for over 30 years. We are located downtown Lincoln at 333 Lincoln Boulevard in Lincoln, California. We do automotive repair and 24 hours towing. Our phone number is 916-645-2859, or you can find us on the web. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a Super Taco, we'd love to see you. Pass plung on and missed. He got him on strikes at 86. The off speeder. Bruno strikes out the. He's going to look that way. Now he's going to duck down the middle. He's got a guy wide open at the 18. Get it. That's Robert Freeman. And Robert's trying to make a couple of moves. He comes back to the 15. Comes down to the 10. He gets a block to the 5.
Top of the eighth inning, got a new pitcher. It's Jake Morrell, the, the sophomore for the Beavers. He is 0-1 in the season. This is his 11th appearance, 22 innings pitch, 19 strikeouts and 25 base on balls. He's relieving Tyler Moore, who went seven innings, gave up five hits, four runs, walked three, and struck out eight. So Tyler Moore delivering a very good performance against the Hawks team that put up 16 runs on 18 hits the game before. So he uh, goes to the bench, try to uh, sweat out his first win of the season. And meanwhile, Jake Morrell, the left-hander, will come on and face Noah Cantor, then Grafton Shorts and Cameron Orr. Cantor is 0 for 3 with two flyouts in this one, and Jake delivers a strike to start us off at no balls and one strike. Fly to right in the first, fly to right in the third, and a strikeout in the fifth for Noah. This is outside, does Jake Morrell. Breaking ball into Cantor's in there for a strike, and Noah thought about swinging, pulled it back, and it's one ball and two strikes. That one misses outside, two and two. They were a little bit overthrown on that one. Two balls and two strikes, starting off the top of the eighth inning. Beavers on top, 11 to four, trying to even this series at one before the finale on Friday. It sails away outside three and two. 25 walks in 22 innings for Jake has been the, kind of the Achilles heel so far for the left-hander. And that all on the outside corner call strike three. Cantor is out on strikes. And Grafton Shorts will be the hitter. The, short, uh, the second baseman has a walk, a single, and a strikeout. So he is one for two. Looks like we might have a uh, <laughs> looks like that's Dylan Abid is going to hit for Dylan out of Pleasant Grove High School. We're in number thirty. Abid takes in there for a strike. So Shorts ends the day two, uh, one for two with a run scored. And a bead takes that one outside. So it's one ball and one strike on Dylan. Left-hander against left-hander. That one is on the inside corner for a strike. Dylan to be hitting at a 355 clip with five runs batted in for the Hawks. But he's behind the count one and two. Hits it into left field right in the hole between third and short for a base hit. Perfect two strike hit by Dylan the beat and he is at first base with one out to bring up Cameron Orr. Cameron, the right fielder, flied to left, had a t RBI double in the fourth and later scored and then struck out in the sixth. All against Tyler Moore, who went the first seven innings for the Beavers. That one is high and outside for a ball. Looks like Jack Moore is on deck to bat for Ben Pernetti. Morrell's going to go over to first base, and the bead dives his way back in. One ball and no strikes on Cameron Orr. Breaking ball is fouled back to the screen. One and one. Pass ball misses inside and low to Cameron Orr out of Ponderosa High School. 235 coming in today. 
Four home runs, 21 batted in, make that 22 now. Had a home run in yesterday's game, won by the Hawks 16 to 11. A big leading off at first base. Fastball is outside, the throw back to first base, not in time. Three balls, one strike now. Morrell's going to go over to first base, and the runner is back in. Check swing on the outside corner. Call strike two. Three balls, two strikes on Orr. A bead the runner at first base, the pinch hitter who singled. Breaking ball in there, call strike three. Beautiful pitch by Jake Morrell. Two strikeouts in the inning, two outs, and I bring up the pinch hitter, Jack Moore, the uh, sophomore out of Ponderosa. So Jack will uh, come up here with two outs and one on. Two hundred on the season for Jack with does have a home run and twelve runs batted in. Breaking ball misses outside. He's ahead in the count one and zero. He's followed by Robert Perry, the catcher. So more hitting for Pernetti, who finished zero for three. The strikeout, a couple of ground outs. That's high in the air to left center field. Hit pretty well. Babata is on the trail, and it is out of here. Jack Moore with a two-run home run. Pinch hit, two-run home run. Makes this 11-6 in favor of the Beavers. Abid scores ahead of him. Moore with his second home run of the season. And it's suddenly a little bit closer. Hit 11-6 and Robert Perry will be the hitter. So credit to the Hawks for pushing the right buttons there, bringing up Jack Moore as the pinch hitter and Nabeed as a pinch hitter, both pinch hitters in the inning, two for two with uh, two runs. That's outside from Morrell. And two runs driven in. Second home run of the game for the Hawks as Griffin Harrison hit one out in the third inning. Popped up right side. Tatum's going to give chase. Looks like Willie might have room. Makes the catch for the out. So two runs on two hits. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Beaver's still on top, 11-6. to six. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise, from minor carpentry to drywall, electrical and flooring for property managers, landlords, and renters alike. We ensure that every job is completed to the highest standards, so you can have peace of mind. Contact us today to discover how Jeffers Resource Group can help keep your home in top shape. Told Rick, I said, "This is the guy that's going to lead us out of the. <laughs> he can't even lead us out of the. He can't get lot. out of the parking lot." I'm sure we just, just moments ago, the oh. a rhubarb, a brouhaha yes. between Mr. Reynolds, the great Jerry Reynolds, and the great Mr. Basketball. They always wear he something dresses different. different. He has his yeah. suit on and stuff. So, yeah. So it's like, hey, fans, I'm, I'm different. Yeah. You know, I'm the man. Well, See, so. Yeah. so
Bottom of the eighth inning, Josh sees the new pitcher for the Hawks, the sixth pitcher on the day, making his tenth appearance of the season. He is 0-2. He has started two games, 19 and a third innings, 15 strikeouts and 16 walks, a 6.52 ERA, and he'll face Marcus Babata in the top of the order, Brett Griffiths and Wyatt Winalski. Babata struck out twice, been hit by a pitch and fly to left. Swings and misses at that fastball from Seas. Sales high and outside for a ball. Evens it up at one and one. Josh Seas is a sophomore out of Galena High School in Reno, Nevada. Inside for a ball, which I believe is another state. So I don't know if the rules, I don't know if the stats that he put up there count in California. You've got to check them at the border when they wave you through because you don't have any fruit. Swing and a miss, two and two. They still do that. I haven't been to Nevada in so long. They still wave. And no one ever checks. They don't even ask you, do you have any fruit or anything? And, no, I don't. Nobody asked me outside for a ball. Maybe they just look at me and go, ah, that guy's not, not getting anything healthy. I'll check him for cheeseburgers or something. That's true. I forgot about that. Popped up out of play. They check everybody for weapons, but they just wave me through. Like, come on. Come on, that guy. He's got a Pez dispenser or something, knows how to use it. Outside, nice job by Babata to get the base on balls. And that'll bring up Brett Griffiths. And after this half inning, we will talk to Stones McCoy. I don't know why, but we will because I decided we were going to two innings ago and I keep forgetting. I just I check out my service dog buddy down the front row and I you know he looks so happy and just kind of hanging out and stuff. Brett Griffiths has singled four times and been hit by a pitch, which is a nice day if you can have it. Singled and scored in the first, was hit by a pitch and scored in the fifth. Drove in a run also in the first. Takes the breaking ball and fouls it off. Good looking pitch by Seas. Put him ahead of the count. No balls and one strike. Freda started then Villanueva, Duchain, Lockhart, Castle, and now Seas. 11 to 6 here. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. That's in the dirt. Nice block by Perry on an outside pitch. Evens it up at 1 and 1. Kudos to the uh, Hawks for having enough pitchers they can warm somebody else up, too. And they just say, that's our embarrassment of riches. If you pitch six guys and have another guy you can warm up. Fastball, good looking pitch. Got past Griffiths, and not much does these days. One ball and two strikes. It's like Nolan Craddock loosening up, and he's just really loosening up out there. That's outside for a ball, but I fully expected it to be called strike three. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. Good lead at first by Babata. Breaking ball, another good block by Perry. He's going to throw back to first base, and Babata has to scamper back to beat the tag. From Cameron Orr, who's come on to play first base. I think Abid has gone out to play left field. <laughs> 3 2 pitch popped up out of play. Through the full count pitch again with Babata leading off of first. Griffiths bounds that one down the right field line and he'll stay alive. <laughs> full count again to Brett. Line drive, that's in the left field. That's another base hit. That's five for Brett in this one. Babata thought about trying to get to third, but Abid comes up with it and throws it in. Five hits and six times on base for Brett Griffiths, and I think that's what a leadoff man is supposed to do, although, you know, I don't know that much about the game, but it seems like a good idea. Staying at second is Babata. Here's Wyatt Winalski. And we don't have Wyatt Winalski. 
Nick Golden's going to come up to the plate to bat for Wyatt. So Golden comes up to the plate to bat for Wyatt Winalski. And uh, Nick has dropped down a few bunts in his day, so I kind of expect us to see him drop one down. And so does uh, Corey Williams at third, who moves in. And at first is Cameron Orr. And even Stones McCoy thinks it might be a bunt, and he knows a lot about baseball, he keeps telling me. Golden is a freshman out of El Camino High School. Here's the pitch. He doesn't show bunt, and it's high and outside. 1-0. I am not pushing the right buttons today. Every time I think something's going to happen, it doesn't happen. Normal people would just stop saying it, but not me. I'll just keep being wrong. 1-0 on Nick Golden. Griffiths at first, Babata down at second. Inside. He hit him. Well, that's even a better plan. Go up and get hit. That's going to load the bases. And the... Uh, Coach of the Hawks is going to come out and inquire just quite calmly whether that Golden might have stuck the old right elbow out over the plate. That brings up, oh, uh, yeah, he's hot. Jose Vega has singled in two runs in the first, then he's singled and scored in the second, singled and scored in the fourth, singled in a run in the fifth, and fly to right in the sixth. He's got the bases loaded. He's got nobody out here. And the Beavers trying to put a capper on this when they lead 11 to 6. Hawks bring the infield in against Vega. Jose takes a fastball outside for a ball 1 0. Vega, big chopper over the second baseman's head into right center for a base hit. One run scores. The second one will score easily going into third base is Golden, and Jose Vega comes through again. Two more runs batted in for the DH, and the Beavers now lead at 13-6. to six. Perfect spot right there as Griffith scores and Babata scores. The drawn in infield, no match for that big chopper. Golden at third, Vega at first, still nobody out. And here's Jaden Reynolds. Takes a fastball. It's in there for a strike, 0-1. Reynolds hit into a fielder's choice in the first. And he grounded to second. RBI triple in the fourth. He walked in the seventh. Popped out in the fifth. Jaden lines that one into left. That is going to get down for a base hit. Another RBI for Jaden Reynolds. Another run for the Beavers. And we'll move on top 14-6. to six. Stopping at second is Mesa. A good piece of hitting for Reynolds. Picks up his second run back of the day. He has 13 on the season now. And here's Darren Eels. He's got Vega at second. He's got Reynolds at first. Nobody out still in the inning for the Beavers. Eels hits a line drive in the left center. Christensen coming over. Still coming over. What a nice play by Chase Christensen. Covering a lot of ground and going into left center field for that catch. For the first out. That'll bring up Duncan Hansen, who was doubled in two runs in the first and walked three times in a row and then single in the seventh. So Hansen with a couple of hits in this one. Coach Jay going to come in and have a word with the umpire and says, yeah, hey, we're winning 14-6. to six. Maybe we can call it or something and we're, we could win. I don't think that's what he's going to do. Maybe he's, uh, well, we'll see. Maybe Duncan's going to get a break here, and uh, we'll bring in a pinch hitter for Hanson, but we're speculating here. All right, brother. Delay a game. Yeah. I think that whoever's coming into bat for Duncan had no idea he was because he was, he's saying, well, hey, he was like reclining there and going, hey, I'm going to just have some sunflower seeds. What? You want me to bat? All right. Sounds good. So Cuccini going to bat. Chris Cuccini comes on to hit for Hanson. He's got runners at first and second. Takes a fastball in there for a strike. Chris Cuccini hitting for Hanson here in the eighth inning. 
Duncan was two for two. Scored twice, drove in two. So a very productive day for the sophomore catcher. Fouled out of play by Ciccini. Danny Gallego is on deck. Right-handed hitter against the right-hander sees. Outside with a fastball. One and two. Three runs in for the Beavers here in the eighth. They lead at 14 to six. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. So two outs, and Danny Gallego will be the hitter. Danny came on in the sixth inning to bat for David Henry, got a base on ball, scored in that inning, then struck out in the seventh, so he is 0 for 1 in this one. He's got Vega at second base. He's got Reynolds over at first. Pops it up right side. Right fielder coming in, second baseman going out. It's going to be the right fielder making the catch for the third out. So three runs on three hits and leave a couple. We go to the top of the ninth inning. Beavers trying to nail this one down. They lead 14 to six. Here at Super Taco, we specialize in authentic uh, Mexican food. One of the reasons we are different from other places is that uh, we make everything from scratch. You get a great value when you come here, large portions and quality food. Our most popular dishes are many uh, different kind of tacos. We have uh, giant burritos, different kinds of enchiladas, and the fajita. If you're ready for real Mexican food, stop in at a super taco. We'd love to see you. When it comes to your home's maintenance and repairs, Jeffers Resource Group has you covered. Our handyman services offer a comprehensive range of expertise so you can have peace of mind. Contact us to schedule your service today. I love baking. I've been doing it my whole life. Grateful Bread was started because I needed a job. Personally, it was the most rewarding part about eating it. It always used to seem like bread was just an afterthought, and uh, which was always kind of disappointing. But now, as not only people, foodies and people eating, they, they're expecting better quality, and, and people notice it, they can see it. Top of the ninth inning, trying to nail this one down for Tyler Moore. It is 14 to 6. It is Joey Garrienti coming in to pitch. Chris Caccini is behind the plate for the Beavers as they try to close this. That'll be 9 1 and 2 for the Hawks. So Noah Ria Mio will start us off, and then Christensen and Williams. Mio has uh, popped to first fly to left and walked, so he is 0 for 2 in this one. Joey Garrienti is making appearance number 12 on the season. He is 2-2, two and two, 30 innings pitched, 20 strikeouts, and 14 walks in a 6-0-0 ERA. Freshman out of Vista Del Lago finishing up his warm-up tosses as we are about to enter into the uh, top of the ninth inning with Mio, Christensen, and Williams, and then Griffin Harrison if anybody reaches base. Beavers scoring three times in the bottom of the eighth to make Coach Jay, I'm sure, breathe a little bit easier. It's Jose Vega and Brett Griffiths. Griffiths has five hits. Vega has five hits, and he's driven in five runs. So Jose doing a pretty good job out of the D8 spot. Five for six with five runs batted in. But right now it's about Mio, Christensen, and Williams. For the Hawks, as the Beavers try to even this series ahead of Game Three on Friday at Casumnes River. <laughs> Guarantee ready to go, and that I think hit the umpire on the helmet, man. He's checking out his own helmet. And I believe he's going to call that a ball just on principle. 
<laughs> I would. It looked like a ball anyway, but even if it wasn't a goal ball, hopefully he is okay. And I don't blame him for taking a minute, take a second here, and uh, make sure he's okay as the trainer's going to come out. Beavers will finish this series Friday at Consumers River. As we said, then next week we've got a couple at home in the three-game series against Sac City. They come in Tuesday at 2 o'clock and Friday at 2 o'clock. And I, I believe we'll have both those games for you right here. On ARC Athletics or Stones Radio Network's YouTube, we urge you to subscribe to both, to one at least, but actually we'd like you to do both. I want to jump those numbers up. I mean, we've got, you know, a lot of subscribers want to make it just a little bit more, get to the next plateau, make Stones McCoy happy, which is not easy to do. Want to know now as the umpire is back in there. That is a ball, 2-0. I guess after the ball hits you in the helmet, you're not looking to, to ring the next guy, next pitch up. 2-0. and So everybody's even now. That is high for a ball, 3-0. and Mio walked his last time up. 0 for 2 so far. Top of the order to follow with Chase Christensen. Last ball is in there for a call strike. Three and one. Three balls, one strike, leading off the top of the ninth inning. Gary Enti from the stretch. Inside for a ball, he walked him. So Mio goes down to first base, and Chase Christensen will be the hitter. The center fielder struck out, been hit by a pitch, grounded to third, and hit to a fielder's choice. So he is 0 for 3 in this one so far. Came in at 310, had a couple hits in yesterday's Hawks win. Scored a couple of runs in that one as well. Willie Tatum's not going to hold the runner on at first base. Gary Enti's pitch is outside for a ball, 1-0. Mine were on Saturday. We are over at uh, Becky Rust Field for the softball doubleheader between the Beavers and the Delta College Mustangs. Big 8 conference action. I think the Beavers are fourth place right now. I believe Alakini is either second or third in the Big 8 conference. So a big matchup, doubleheader. That's in the dirt, gets past Ichini and going, back to, going down to second base on the wild pitch will be the runner Mio. Chris suddenly has to follow that ball all the way over almost to the Beavers' dugout before he can find it and get it back to Joey Garianti. <laughs> Christensen settles in. Ahead in the count, two balls and no strikes. That's right down the middle for a strike, two and one. Beavers looking for their third conference win and ninth win overall on the uh, season. Game number 30. That's down low for a ball, so it's three and one. On Christensen. Corey Williams, the third baseman, to follow. Wind still blowing briskly out here at Beaver Field. That's a check swing. Going to be a tough play at shortstop for Eels. Comes in, picks it up, goes across the diamond, and gets him at first base. That's an excellent play by Darren Eels to get Christensen at first base. Mio moves over to third base, but more important is the out to the Beavers. Eels was a deep short and came all the way in and gunned him down. Gary NT talking to Willie Tatum and also involved the umpire. I'm not even gonna, I, I'm an expert on body language. I'm not even going to hazard a guess on what that was all about. I don't think there was anything close. Sometimes there's a close play over at first base and maybe the feet get tangled or something, but that did not look to be the case. Corey Williams, the hitter. 
Flied to center, struck out, flied to center again, and then was hit by a pitch. So he is 0 for 3 in this one. 314 coming in. First pitch is down the middle from Joey. 0 and 1. So what uh, I'm getting from my people is that uh, Willie Tatum at first base and the dugout of the uh, Hawks might be having a little, you know, two, a little by play, so to speak, and the umpire was right over there at the time, so maybe that's what that was about. That's chopped foul, so it's quickly 0-2 on Corey Williams with Griffin Harrison to follow. Williams with a home run, 23 batted in. Hawks have two home runs in this game. Harrison and the pinch hitter, Jack Moore. That's in the dirt, gets by. Here comes the runner in from third. It's not even going to be a throw made, and he will score on the wild pitch. So 14 to 7 now in favor of the Beavers. One, two count on Corey Williams with Griffin Harrison to follow. Tyler Moore started with the first seven innings. Jake Morrell came on and worked the eighth inning. And Gary Ante in here to try to close it out for Coach Jay and the Beavers. Check swing, did he go? No, he did not, according to the first base umpire. So Williams stays alive, two balls and two strikes. That's foul back to the screen, so go again at two and two. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the ninth inning. That is outside for a ball, three and two. Beavers have the series next week against Sac City, then series against Modesto and Santa Rosa to close out the 2024 season. Looking to try to get win number three here against Consumers. That is call strike three. And Williams is out on strikes. Two outs now in the inning. First strikeout for Joy Garrienti. And Griffin Harrison will be the hitter. He singled, homered, singled, and struck out. So he is three for four. His home run number six on the season now has 32 runs batted in. He was three for six yesterday, has three hits as well today, and has driven in seven runs over the two games. Takes that one down low. 1-0. Right-hander against right-hander. Outfield deep and slightly around to the left for Harrison. Takes outside. Noah Cantor on deck. The designated hitter. That one also misses. So 3-0 and on Harrison. Looking to get on base for the fourth time today. That's high and inside. Harrison gets the four-pitch walk. Second walk issued by Gary Ante here in the ninth. He goes down to first base, and Noah Cantor will be the hitter, the DH. Sitting on a pair of flyouts to right field and a pair of strikeouts. So no 0 for 4 in this one, hitting a 260. Does have three home runs on the season 
And if he strikes out or flies to right, that's a full house. That's in the dirt. Nice block by Cattini. One ball, no strikes. Actually got him sort of invited to poker night the other day. Say, anyone to poker night? I panicked. No, every time I say I'm going to do something and, and you say, well, they should have called me. No. You do have the poker face. Well, just no one likes to look at your face, so it doesn't matter. That's in there for a strike. One and one. I think I went to a poker, I went to like a, a gambling place one time. A gambling den. <laughs> a den of iniquity. Oh, a casino. Yeah, but it wasn't like it was, it wasn't like a casino at the casino place. There's a chopper down the third base line into the dugout area. One ball and two strikes. The last strike guy who is famous from the Lincoln Potters games has not made an appearance here at American River College yet this season. And that guy has a lot of energy. I used to think it might have been you, but the guy has way too much energy. You took a sprint across the press box and had to sit down for like two innings. So I don't think you can do that. One, two on the way. High fly ball, well hit center field, moving over Bavon, now trying to shield his eyes, reaching up and can't get it. It's going to hit on the warning track. A run will score and Cantor will come into second base. So Cantor will get credit for an RBI. So Babana no longer in center field. That ball was lost in the, uh, looks like Marcus is over in left. That ball was, might be Danny Gallego out in center field. So run is in. It is now 14 to 8. And then this guy go in center. And he kind of never really had a beat on that one. The ball was hit very well. I mean, it hit on the warning track. And here's Grafton Shorts. Outside for a ball. He has walked, singled, struck out, and singled again. So two for three in this one. has scored twice. Actually, this is a bead who batted for Shorts. Who singled and scored back in the eighth inning. So Dylan the bead, the hitter. Shorts is on on the bench. Happy to get his name mentioned again, but he's not in anymore. Nice looking breaking ball in there for a strike. One ball and one strike on Dylan Abid. Came on as a pinch hitter and then took over in left field. Cameron Orr on deck. Nice looking pitch outside corner call strike two. Good location by Gary Enti. And once again, down here to the last strike. One and two now. A bead sliced a line drive to left field his last time up on his pinch hit appearance. Hits it sharply to the right of second. Reynolds backhands it over to first. A little high, but Willie Tatum brings it in. The Beavers have grabbed the W. Garianti gives up two runs in the final inning. Our final score, the Beavers 14 and the Hawks 8. Even the series at one game three will be on Friday at 2 o'clock on the road at Consumers and Stones. McCoy, I never let you do your seventh inning stretch, and so I'm going to let you do a little post game. All right. Let's turn the clock back three hours to at the beginning of the game and <laughs> what you were asking for, and did you get it? Absolutely. You got really nice pitching today. I mean, Tyler Moore uh, doing yeoman's work out there, going seven strong. Um, and keeping them close. And now he obviously he allowed a few runs, um, but when your offense is putting up the numbers that they're putting up, it's okay. You can you can allow for a little bit more. And I think he really pitched to the way the game was going today, as opposed to trying to strike everybody out. He realized he had a little bit of uh, room to work with, and I think he, he really played into that tonight. Yeah, he did have seven strikeouts, but to your point, he was uh, pitching a little bit to contact. Give him credit. I mean, it's not all often that you have two guys on your team get five hits, and the no. pitcher is the uh, MVP because Tyler <laughs> got his first victory. We got to mention, I don't know if all, in the two years that we've been doing this, we got Brett 
Griffith with five hits. We got Jose Vega with five hits. Two guys with five hits in a single game for the Beavers. Yeah, that's. I mean, you you can put ten hits between two guys up. It's going to be a, a tough game for anybody else to beat you when you can uh, put up ten hits between two guys. I'm just. It's. I'm very impressed with the Hawks. They never stopped. They kept yeah. fighting, even though they got down early and down often. They kept trying to come back, put up a, a run here and there, and they keep they kept fighting. Um, and I really think the, their their biggest downfall this this game um, was their pitching. They yeah. just we were able to get the hits, timely hits, and then accumulate a bunch of hits, and that really helped uh, the Beavers get up. Yeah, there. you got a team that yesterday scored 16 runs on 18 hits. They always feel like they're going to come back, so it comes back to Tyler Moore. Yes. He did give up a couple runs, but he was able in the later innings in the fifth and the sixth and the seventh to go ahead and not give them the chance. They did put on a couple runs at the end, but when they were kind of in the in the middle of the comeback, when things were going back and forth, he shut them down in those middle three innings I thought were really important. Absolutely. I mean, he what he did, and this is what you need from your starting pitchers, you need to not allow the other team to feel like they're rallying. Yeah, exactly. And he never, even though there was a hit or, or two there, a run here or there, he never allowed uh, the Hawks to feel like they were in a rally situation. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what you want out of your pitching. Uh, the last inning here was just a little bit longer than we would have liked. <laughs> yes. Um, but, uh, no, the pitching for the Beavers, and, and like I said, and I was talking with Coach Jay before the game, very impressed this year um, how deep the pitching has yeah. been for the Beavers. That's not something we've come to see in the last couple of years. This year so far, it's been really nice. So the Beavers closed this one out. They went at 14-8. to eight. They'll go to Consumers on Friday and try to take this series. They won their third conference game today. Reminder, next week we are here Tuesday and Friday with the Sac City coming in to provide the opposition and on Saturday, we're over at Becky Russ Field for the softball doubleheader Beavers against San Joaquin Delta. Final score.